Each race's reaction to enemy attacks. Terran, we need some help here. Zerk, Scree. Protoss, we embrace the glory of battle. True, dude. Each race's reaction to the enemy's attack, the taller rim. Only destruction awaits our foes. Very nice. Yeah, the Protoss are very dramatic indeed. Drama queens. All of them. All of them. I was digging through unfinished cinematic game files and I found this. <laughs> is that Nova riding a random guy from the Hyperion? Wait, is that supposed to be Horner? That doesn't really look like Horner, am I crazy? Anyways, what is this? Somewhere on the outskirts of Char. Great, so now that we've solved the catering problem, let's move on to- Still insufficient cheese. Okay, I get it, Abathur. Moving on. Jeez, people, do you want to be here all day? Fine. We'll get some at Kroger. Yes, I want delicious cheese. So, next we'll order get what? I have no idea what they want. Anyways. Business. The patch. We've gone too far. Yes. Protoss is too weak. Zerg is too strong. Cheese. We must dial back. Otherwise, the people are- Hello, friends. Oh, God, he's here. <sighs> No, we're not dialing back. Everything is going according to plan. People still think Protoss is OP. We shall continue to secretly nerf them. But Harstam, the forums... Do not worry. Just be patient. Terran is next. Can I have some cheese? Good. Very good. That's a high quality production, dude. I have no idea how you make any of this. That's pretty cool. Leaked video footage of the inner workings of the Balance Council. I don't really want to get into the balance discussion again, guys. I have been following the balance discussion from a bit of a distance. And my god, do I not enjoy it. It it really does remind me of politics. I, I don't know. I feel like we need to have a balance discussion free stream. But maybe that's not, I don't know, maybe that's not possible. What's this? Four days ago, a UNN presents a special programs on StarCraft II balance by Donnie Vermillion? Good evening, this is Donnie Vermillion Live from the UNN Studios on Core Hall. Today we've got a breaking story for you. There was a balance patch announced. <laughs> we'll go now to our reporter, Kate Lockwell. Kate, no! is Protoss still OP? Actually, Donnie, it seems people think that Protoss is getting the short end of the stick here. Historically, Protoss has been underperforming- Mate, Protoss is definitely not getting the short end of the- but anyways. And it doesn't seem like Protoss has gotten the buffs necessary to fix- That's right, folks, you heard it here first. Protoss is still overpowered. Sky Toss is a bunch of bullshit and Cannon Rush needs to be removed from the game. Excellent. I'm gonna have to forward this to CTG. I don't think CTG checks out the StarCraft subreddit as often, but maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. I don't think he really watches for the multiplayer stuff. I think you'll like this. That is really nice. This is what AI was meant for, guys. This is why AI, uh, yeah, AI was, was made. The battlecruiser captain after I teleport him onto the target instead of Yamato? No, how do you do that? How did you pull that off? You used the wrong hotkey? Ay, 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 ay. Karas? Barges into the lore, full voice acting, his mastery of sonic powers were considered legendary. I will stand against the Queen of Blades, elaborates <laughs> further, and then dies. Yeah, he does die within about 30 seconds of him appearing in the game, doesn't he? Yeah, he does- he does disappear pretty much immediately. That's a good meme, I like that one. Is this what the average Protoss player looks like right, right away? Is this- is this the average physique of the average Protoss? How do you even get your t-shirt behind your neck like that? How do you- wh what is this piece of clothing that this Giga Chad guy is wearing? How do you even do that? I'm not muscular enough, that's clearly the problem. Thanks, What's up, Integral? Thanks. I miss the loco rambles at the beginning of your USC2 casts. Oh, I've got plenty of those, man. Thank you very much, Integral. Max Pax's real name uncovered when mom calls you by your full name. Maximum Paximum. <laughs> this is a very low effort meme. Very nice. I haven't played a single second of StarCraft 2. Ask me anything and I will pretend I'm a pro. Oh god. This is literally the entire Reddit already? Yeah! Actually true, dude. How many guys on the subreddit have actually played a game of StarCraft 2 this year? Is it more than 20%? Why did the 3 hatch before 21 supply Zerg build go out of style? Because it's too slow, other builds are more efficient? I mean, other builds are more efficient, yes. Is it too slow? 
The reason why triple hatch before pool fell out of style or fell out of style is because literally going hatch gas pool is better as far as like worker count goes. It feels like going triple hatch before pool is faster with workers, but it really isn't. What's the best counter to a widow mine rush in TVT? <laughs> this guy is in for a treat when the new patch hits. Are you seriously asking? You just have to play around it? Yeah. How to Zerk Rush? You have to distract the enemy, and when he doesn't expect that, bam, you rush. You suck, and I do too. Here we go. What people are starting to forget is that the problem of PvT is at the highest level only, above 6k+. plus. Not even above 6k+, plus, man, above like 6'4". There's no problem even in GM and lower. In fact, there are a lot more Protoss players in GM than Terran or Zerk. This subreddit has somehow has come to the conclusion that Widow Mines are the bane of your existence. Yeah, dude. This subreddit is, uh, is not the best place to discuss balance, genuinely. I think a more charitable read is that some units are just not fun to play against. That is a lot more reasonable. Yes. Saying that sort of stuff, I don't have any problems with. But whenever people are like, you know, giving very precise balance suggestions, but they don't even really understand the game, that's when it kind of grinds my gears a little bit. Why don't mappers make cool maps that aren't all the same? Make something new, like st uh, stasis, redshift? This shit is awful. Oh my, <laughs> oh my god, insta veto. Yeah, no, this is very true. The clown council? Oh god. This guy, by the way, has posted some really dumb <laughs> I was starting to pay attention to some people's nicknames, and this guy, RiverHS, is like one of the top tier clowns on this subreddit, man. This guy posts some of the dumbest takes on the balance patch that I've ever seen. But I haven't seen this one yet. Overcharge nerf, disruptor nerf. Protoss players are just worse, but we will buff the race. Pinky promise. Disruptor nerf, Hydra nerf, cyclone buff. Mega cyclone buff, void ray nerf. This is what I mean, dude. This guy is not even taking into account half of the really big advantages that Protoss gets with the proposed patch, but doesn't even bring up the ghost. <laughs> yeah. This post completely ignores the massive ghost nerf, baneling nerf, lurker nerf, infester nerf. Yeah. Black Lotus is a really bad map. Yeah, so that's the really large one, right? I'm a ladder hero and I'm blah, blah, blah. You can drop units there. The map is going to make, it's the high ground perch at the natural is landable. You can land, what? <laughs> hold up, where is, hold up. Let me, let me find Black Lotus. Black Lotus. You can land units in the little high ground that's overlooking the natural? Wait, where? Here? No! You can land the siege tank there? Okay, I gotta check this out in game. Because that sounds horrible. Okay. <laughs> no! Oh no! <laughs> Hold up right now. How many can I fit in there? How did you get out? Well, hallelujah. Acknowledged. Will do, command. Five by five. Confirmed. Where's the What? Yes, sir. Now what? I'm gonna have to take a screenshot for Twitter chat. I gotta get my interactions for this month. Okay. Um, I thought we decided that um, this was a bad idea in like 2011. <laughs> we had a map where you could do that exact thing. And uh, it was uh, very quickly decided that it was not great. Can lurkers reach that? I would just have to reload or remake this lobby thing. We can have a quick little peek. You could definitely put two siege tanks and build a turret. Easy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> this seems like an insane mechanic, though. The fact that you can... <laughs> okay. I guess I can put... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna make one more. I think I can probably put four of those things in there. Question is, is it gonna be in range? Hmm. Lurker's too big? Interesting. Oh, no, 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 I can fit three in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I 
This is this is great. This is really nice. Yeah, big big fan of that. Um, so this is one of the maps that is proposed to be in the next map pool. It's like Lost Temple. It really is like Lost Temple, dude. That's insane. Can you fit a Nidus worm there? <laughs> I mean, I guess. I don't know why you would want to put a Nidus worm there, but you could you could fit a Nidus worm there. Yeah, I guess. What if I make six Hydras and I morph them in on the cliff? That is a very strange request, but I see what you're trying to say. What's going on, Shiny? Hello, hello. hello. Thank you so much for your resub. Appreciate you. Okay, I can put six Hydras here. I feel like I can fit more. Yeah, I can fit more. I gotta get my social media cloud going here in a minute, guys. Oh, there you go. Alright, alright. I guess this will do for now. Screenshot number one. Or I guess technically screenshot number three. They're not doing social distancing, no. <laughs> oh no, you can't burrow them all. You cannot burrow them all. That is not possible. But you can make them. <laughs> this this does feel a little bit cursed. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess you can uh, at the very least you know, get some additional uh, reinforcements going. That would be- that would be something. Alright. I gotta post this on the Twitter machine. Or I mean, X. All my homies love X. What's going on? Sagittarius. Thank you. Gifting a community sub to Psycho? Hell yeah. Black Lotus is my new favorite map. Should I include somewhere that it's likely that it's gonna be part of the new map pool? The next map pool? Can I do the thinking emoji? How do you do a thinking emoji? There it is. There we go. Add these as well. You can technically fit a whole lot more lurkers on that high ground. You can technically fit a whole lot more lurkers on the high ground. Uh, to clarify. This is the natural expansion. No, you can't burrow them all. <laughs> this is insane, dude. The fact that this is possible is uh is something. Yeah, yeah, that is uh yeah, is uh yeah, it's not that's not great. I'm not I'm not gonna lie, that does not look great. I do have a TikTok account, yes. I feel like I haven't told you guys that I am a TikTok superstar. I have 2,000 followers, chat, on TikTok. Tick TikTok. All my videos get about 500 views, and then this one has 1.1 million. Why does this one have 1.1 million? What's going on? All of them get like 300 views, and then this one has 1.1 million. Oh, jeez. What? Mate, how fast would that go? Do you think people- It's about me making a roller coaster during a sponsor's stream. Yeah! So it's really weird, right? Here's- Okay, let me plot for you guys TikTok, right? Okay, okay, let me- let me try- let me try and give you guys a little bit of info, right? So this over here is time, right? So this is time. And this is views, right? I'm gonna- There you go. Don't know why I did it like that. Anyways, here's normally how these things go, right? So the red line over here is going to be YouTube. So usually YouTube views originally obviously start at zero. And they kind of go up like this very quickly. And then they kind of taper off a little bit, right? So this is kind of how views usually go on YouTube. So initially you get quite a few and then, it, you know, you get a couple here and there. Right? Yeah, it's it's a, fla a very flaccid curve. Well, well spotted CTG. It's a, um, yeah, it's very grounded. Anyways, uh, I don't know what color I should pick for TikTok. I guess I'll, I'll go with uh, purple. Yeah. Okay, that's not a very good color. 
This one. Yeah, that's much better. Here's how this video went on TikTok, right? So this 1.1 million views is where it's at right now. It started off getting absolutely no views, and then, you know, it got a couple. And then it suddenly spiked to 200k. And then it got a whole lot of nothing for a while, and then it spiked to 800k. And then got a whole lot of nothing, and right now it's going up slowly? How, how does this make any sense? How am I supposed to create any sort of... How, what do I, how does this work? It makes no sense. The algorithm really is a bit of a meme. Yeah, it's really strange. Because like it was stuck at like 500 views and then at 200,000 and then at 800,000 and now it's getting views again. It's, <laughs> it's the TikTok staircase. <laughs> the optics are the ticks and the flats are the talks. <laughs> this is the tick, talk. Tick, talk. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's how it works, yeah. Loco, you should do a YouTube short. I posted a few YouTube shorts on my main channel. <clears throat> you woke up this morning and you saw this. Oh god. There's a burglar in your room? Yeah. One Final Fantasy fourteen player spent 450 hours? Returned. Yo, light switch, thank you. And $5,000 immortalizing their MMO character with a life-size uh, life bronze statue? I kind of feel like this title is written like they're shaming him. This is cool, dude. What do you mean? This guy made a statue of his Final Fantasy XIV character. It cost him 450 hours and $5,000. That's super cool. I don't know how much uh, bronze statues usually are, but I feel like bronze statues are very expensive. Yeah. Guy spent money to make art. What a f loser, am I right? Just sit inside and watch television and drink beer like the rest of us, you f***ing idiot. <laughs> it's so silly. Man is a hobby. F***ing loser. <laughs> Art of 2023, am I right? Oh, what? This guy is a <laughs> He trapped me! <laughs> I didn't even know my Zerkings could get trapped over there. That's amazing. Half of my Lings got trapped there, somehow. How is that possible? Did more of them die? My Zerklings are stuck. Yeah. Help me step Zerk- no, 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 no. We do not need any help, chat. I'm a strong, independent Zerkling. So he just stood there waiting to finish it off. And I didn't know that this was honestly possible. <laughs> what? Yeah, that must have been the group of Zorklings over here that I looped up before they were allowed to uh, leave the spawning pool. Strange. Very, very weird. They got all wiggly there, man. I was trying to figure out why half my links weren't on the other side of the map and I couldn't find them here. Hmm. I don't know if he thought this was BM, actually. I actually thought it was a really cool move, but... I would have assumed more Zerklings died there. I think none of them died. We've been fed lies. Most streamers lie about being higher ranked, not lower ranked. Oh. I've been doing this wrong all this time, the Swiss. It is what it is, dude. What is VPET? What is this? Oh god. This game just came out? Ooh. -oo. Feeling like the computer desktop is too dull? Need something cute to heal oneself? Come and try this new completely free and open source VPET simulator. Oh, f oh god. Is this one of those things that just walks around on your desktop? I remember that in like 1998. Gabe, do you have one of these things running around in your monitor right now? Be honest. Gabe. Watopia, what about you? Memory? Hello? This looks pretty awful, though. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't look great. But maybe it's fun, I don't know. Your GPU would melt? Good, good, yes. This doesn't look like a GPU melter, I'll be honest, but... Overwhelmingly positive, man. 
I guess I have a daughter now. Time to buy milk. Casually sleeps in front of the crosshair. Finally, someone that likes my music. No way this Chinese malware can't be this cute. <laughs> yeah, it is a little fishy, isn't it? She slept literally two seconds after I told her to study, just like me. <laughs> the only girl I'll have in my life. Interesting game, guys. Interesting game. You can download this for a friend, sure. Tenth highest rank, though. That's actually pretty high. Facts about platypuses. But, but, pl um. Ah, here we go. Eight interesting platypus facts. They're venomous. <laughs> of course. They give sharks a run for their money, at least as far as their electro reception is concerned. They use electronic impulses to detect underwater prey and locate objects in the darkest depths of the creeks and rivers they call home. What the f***? Bloody pusses lay eggs. Despite being a mammal, they lay eggs. They're overdressers with two layers of fur. For insulation and waterproofing, platypuses use their fur to trap a layer of air next to their skin so they can remain buoyant and dry when they're underwater. What the f***? What is this animal? Why does it exist? How did it make it so far? This, this I think is the main proof that Australia is not real, guys. Like, it really does look like this is some sort of, I don't know, like a very large hamster and they just put a beak on it, like a plastic beak, it doesn't quite look right, you know? This looks photoshopped. They're cute, but they're babies. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is something. That is something. That's, that's a look, dude. I might get banned for having this on stream. I don't know. They're even harder to spot now than they used to be. They're real. Mm. Are they, though? That's insane, dude. This is a cool-ass animal. It really does look photoshopped to me. They live in Australia? Right. People originally thought the platypus was a fake animal. An illustration of the platypus, yeah. When the platypus was first described in 1799, so accurate is the blah 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 blah. The plat- yeah. A duck's bill and feet on an otter's body and fur. It really does feel like a- like a hoax, yeah. Venomous egg-laying mammals. That are at the fur, uh, the, the, the risk of extinction. Well, that's that's most people, I guess, or not people, animals. They have ten sex chromosomes. What? They have five pairs. Other still is that some of those Y chromosomes share genes with sex chromosomes found in birds. What the? They don't have stomachs. They nosh on bottom dwelling. Okay, invertebrates like worms, insects. They don't have a sack of digestive enzymes. I. <laughs> I mean, I've never thought of my stomach like that, but... One possible reason for this is that these bottom dwelling dishes can be high in calcium carbonate. Okay, no need for acid if you're canceling it out all the time. They don't have teeth. They see with their bills underwater with those, I guess, electric things. Oh my god. This animal- yeah, <laughs> That is a weird-ass animal. That might be the weirdest animal in the entire world. Is there a stranger animal than the platypus? I can't- I, I don't know. Humans are a lot more normal compared to other- animals out there, okay? Is- <laughs> My- my copy-paste I sec of digestive enzymes. No, 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 no. Is there an animal on planet Another Earth? Another weird fact is that apparently they sweat milk. They sweat milk? <laughs> what? Thank you, Mahans, for the three years! Hell yeah. Is there an animal on Earth that is stranger than the platypus? Strangest animals. Okay. However, here we go. There are other animals that could be considered even stranger than the platypus, depending on your criteria. The blobfish is a deep sea fish that has a gelatinous body that can withstand the high pressure of ocean depths. It is voted the world's ugliest animal. The narwhal is a whale that has a long spiral tusk. Right. Axolotls are cool too. Yeah, you know what? Axolotls are also weird. The star-nosed mole is a mole that has a ring of 22 fleshy tentacles around its nose. What? Star-nosed mole. Ha! Ah! What the f
What anime is this thing from? What the hell? That is one insane looking animal. They're blind? Yeah, I get that, but... The eye eye is a lemur that has a long thin middle finger that it uses to tap on trees and find insects. Aye aye, Captain. Oh yeah, these guys have really long middle fingers, right? Yeah, 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 we've seen those. That is one creepy looking animal ant, dude. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I don't like that thing at all. Axolotls are cool. Yeah, no, I will give you that. A species of salamanders. Yeah, these, these things, ah, They look kinda cute. Yeah, these do look kinda cute. Yeah, so those are its gills. They're like, you know, lungs are outside of their body. I don't think that's a good place to keep them. Like, if I had to choose a location to keep my lungs, I would put them inside the body. Because I feel like that would be a good place for it, because it's better protected. You think they chose? Yeah, 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 definitely. They've probably been on Earth longer than humans. That's true. The star-nosed mole. What a weird animal. It can detect and eat food faster than any other mammal in less than a quarter of a second? Oh, that links to the platypus again, though, so I don't know how accurate this is. Guys, I watched a video uh, on the greatest app yesterday evening called TikTok. Do you guys know TikTok? Hold up, let me see if I can find this. I, this, this video, this video, I don't know how many Americans there currently are. There's probably, it's probably a bit early for an American question. But I think there's a few Americans tuning in right now, so we're probably good. Guten Mittag, Mr. Streamer Lowe's. What is going on, Kyle? Thank you for the 18 months. A wiener, please tell me whether or not this is accurate. I'm making sandwiches for my boyfriend and I because we're going on a hike tomorrow. And as I'm doing this, it occurred to me that French people do something very weird with sandwiches that I think you guys would find strange. So I wanted to share it with you. Um, this is butter. <laughs> so obviously I have an entire half a baguette, obviously. Um, and what they do, it's like a classic sandwich. It's ham, cheese, and butter. Literally just swab it on. No mayonnaise, no mustard, just butter. <laughs> And listen, I know you might be thinking that sounds gross. It's actually so good. Is it healthy? No, of course not. Look at all that. So I'm gonna butter these babies up, and then I just put um, a mental amontel cheese and jambon de pays, so ham. And that's 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 what we eat. That's what we eat over here: butter sandwiches with ham and cheese. When you, when you think about it, it's kind of crazy. Like obviously, mayonnaise is basically fat as well, but like at least there's some flavor. And it's good, dude, it's good. Don't don't ask me, don't knock it till you try it, okay? Go get yourself a baguette, a real baguette. Grab some butter, butter that baby up. <laughs> Throw some ham and cheese in it. Oh God, okay, that's- Do you not butter bread in the United States? It, please tell me if this is a thing. Buttering bread is considered weird? Is she trolling? I can't figure it out. If she's trolling, she's brilliant. If she's trolling, she's doing a very smart thing to get a lot of traction, because obviously the algorithm will pick this up, as a lot of people are going to interact with it. She has to be trolling, right? Okay. Maybe she just lives somewhere in the middle of nowhere in, in America. That could also be. But the fact that buttering bread is French culture, I came across this yesterday. Hashtag Parisian. <laughs> Parisian spelled like... Anyway, I feel like it has to be a troll. It ha yeah, okay, okay. I, I just That's wanted all. to make sure that we are aware of this because it does seem a little bit crazy to me, but I had to share it with you guys because it seemed so far out there. That is so funny, though. I thought for a second that buttering bread was considered to be a, um, a non-American thing. I was like, huh, that's... I, I mean, it could be. It could be. My dad does butter with ham, but he eats anything. Wait, what do you mean? He does butter with ham? On a sandwich? That's super normal here. Slice of bread, butter, ham. Super normal. Like, 100% normal. Just butter with ham? Really? Butter with ham sandwich? Wait, that is weird? Is butter with ham weird? You've never seen butter on sandwiches? Interesting. So there is a little bit of truth in that video somewhere. Butter on bread by itself, no meat? That is a bit strange. Just putting butter on bread, I, I, yeah, I don't see that being a thing, but... 
But butter with ham? That doesn't sound that weird. I mean, yeah, butter with bread, I guess, is just toast if you toast the bread first. That's fair enough. Hmm, interesting. Anyways, guys, I had to share it with you. Thank you, by the way, Bunny Warren, for the tier three resub. Big boy resub, appreciate it. Bulletproof coffee is coffee with an entire stick of butter. Oh, sh Bulletproof coffee? Oh, no. Bulletproof coffee recipe. Bulletproof coffee is, is a high quality blah 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 with carefully selected fats. Is this some sort of keto coffee? It sounds like keto coffee. What do you need? You need coffee? Oil? And ghee. Ugh, I don't like the sound of that. I mean, to be fair, the butter also sounds a bit funky. But... Hmm. So you just put a stick of butter in a in a in a cup of coffee, basically. And this might be putting some. Yeah, yeah. Coffee. It sounds like a keto thing, right? But trust me, this makes bulletproof coffee delicious. This makes it so frothy. Oh, she's gonna put an egg in there too. Get an extra dose of fat as well as some fat soluble vitamins and the egg yolk. What about the protein? That's the only thing I care about. So she has a stick of butter. Or not a stick of butter. She has like a little bit of butter. And then coffee. And then an egg. I don't think in the Netherlands we're supposed to be eating eggs raw. But I know in a lot of places they do like heat up the eggs, I think. To basically kill any sort of bacteria. What about the rest? Ah, no, she threw out the rest. Where did she? Where did the rest of the coffee go? No! What did she... Anyways, um, I've got uh, just black coffee, chat. That's what I have. Only in Italy do they eat raw eggs? Uh, it's not really raw. Oh, it's bait. Okay, I was gonna say. It's bait. Never mind, Loco. Back off. It's too early. See, I haven't had my coffee yet. I didn't realize the bait. An actual image of a colossus in a war prism. Excellent. Hey, guys. What's going on here? Why is there a lady dancing? You can stare as much as you like. You keep staring, or I can... My, my. I can tell you are a special one from a single glance. You have but to ask, and we can grant you a moment of pleasure. Don't be shy. Um, should I use that enlarging potion? It might be, it might be time for the potion of, um, ogre strength. Yeah, maybe she can balance my checkbook. We'll have to see. Maybe that's the, maybe she's an accountant on the side. <laughs> what do you think, silly? Love, of course. Hot and vulgar with me. Or <laughs> sweet and sincere with my sister. Trust me. You don't want to miss my signature Meta Baranzan <laughs> love trick. I don't trust anybody that says they have a love trick. Hot and vulgar, please. <laughs> this game is very horny. I want both of you at the same time? Whoa, dude. You two look uncannily alike. We are twins. Um, um, I'm certainly not hiring both of you at once. <laughs> we are quite accustomed to working with each other. If you change your mind. <laughs> All right, Chet. Out of curiosity. Ah, oh, jeez. I don't know what I can show of this on stream. I am, I am gonna keep my finger over here on this button, okay? I should quick save. Even going to the brothel might require a dice roll, huh? I promise you, Loco, it's safe. In that case, we will require two of you. And indeed, I suggest it. Because I have never seen a creature as fair as this pale bow beside you. <laughs> what a world. <laughs> I never dreamed I'd be on the pale I thought she meant Shadow Heart! 
But what is this? Has made the dire mistake of failing to sleep with me so far, and it's a mistake I have been aching to correct. What happened? Nah, if it's with him, not interested, bro. A shame. But either <laughs> one of us will be ready for you. If you wish to have us. <laughs> oh. Hey, lads. Asterion wants the best for me? Do you think we've done something I am stuck with Asterion, apparently. Couldn't get us off your mind, could you? I- I'm- I'm- I'm curious. All right, all right, we'll see. Ah, you're lucky, sister. You're welcome if you have the coin. Five hundred dollars? Chet, that's a lot of dollars, man. Is this something we can afford? I am a very afraid of what it's gonna show me. This way. We have a room upstairs over yonder side. Oh, I actually have to follow her. Okay, I thought that would be a cutscene. Bro, I don't know how far this game goes. You could have had both for 500? You guys, how do you know these details? Yeah, do you think an STI might be able to kill the worm in our brain? Because I'm trying to keep the worm in our brain. Bro, I just got scanned. Oh no, I thought she left. You read about it in a gaming magazine? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love gaming magazines. Do you think the tadpole prevents me from getting syphilis? I don't know. Where is she taking me, dude? What is this? Look, you didn't sign a treaty permitting you to march a war band through my lands. You paid for sex. Oh. Lads, you gotta wait outside. You can <laughs> I I just have the whole party following you along. You can You guys, I'll be back in a minute. Tops? You came. I'm so pleased. You Guys. Can never tell who's going to get cold feet. I don't know. <laughs> so. Oh no. Here, what next? Bro, this game is kind of crazy, bro. All right, chat. No one picked three and one? That really surprises me. <laughs> Somebody picked one. <laughs> Yeah, maybe she's gonna teach me the basics of C-sharp. Could be. An experience no one else here will give you. A chance to be embraced in the dark. But what that means is up to you. So, what can I do for you? A tender touch? Some sensory stimulation? Thank you, Panda Ninja. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this game. Guys, I can't broadcast this. This is... <laughs> Jesus. I... I don't know, guys. This... 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 I don't... I can't back out anymore. Don't worry, Loco, it's art. What do you mean by a chance to be embraced in the dark? It's all part of the experience. The room is bathed in total darkness, so there is nothing to distract from your ecstasy. Yeah. There's no judgment in darkness. No shame. Just the sensation of two bodies. <laughs> she might together. steal my kidneys. She <laughs> she might. Alright, let's have a sweet moment. My senses are yours to command. Or don't you want something wrong? God damn it, Chad. Okay, fine. We'll pull it. We'll pull it. I don't even need to pull it. I know what you guys are gonna say. Like, I thought the in-game characters were horny, but. <laughs> Just because I'm a drow, you think I've got a whip between my legs and a stiletto wedged between my breasts. As I'm relatively new to this business, unlike my brother, I'm not comfortable letting <laughs> my Jesus go Christ, too far. Jet. <laughs> Continue! <laughs> I'm sure Sorn will love you, though. He'll leave you wishing you'd asked for something tame. This is what- <laughs> Wait, no! You guys ruined it! I... <laughs> Even in a video game, you got rejected! <laughs> 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 
Chad got too horny. <laughs> I lost 500 bucks, Chad. I, <laughs> I lost 500 bucks. Are you happy now? See, this is why I go against the Chad's decisions for these polls all the time. We paid $500 to be rejected. Did I just get scammed? At least I still have my kidneys. Yeah, and my virginity too, so that's nice. Shadow Heart approves? <laughs> Did it actually say that? <laughs> I'm gonna talk to the party outside. Hey guys! Oh! Wait, she's still here! Love, I'm utterly parched. Maybe buy me a drink in the bar? What are you? Wh how? What? She, she. Be honest. What do you think of the new look? I love it. Well, I'm glad someone does. Get a stereo to pickpocket her. I might have to do that. Yeah. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk with my love. dude. Oh no! I don't know if that works. Okay, a stereo. Ah, oh, shit. I can attack her. <laughs> I want my money back! No one me yet. <laughs> Give me my money back! <laughs> Excellent. She had... Dude! She had $12, now she's got 512. That was uncalled for, Loco? You thought that was uncalled for? Oh, I was gonna dump her out in the, uh... <clears throat> oh god, alright. I, um... Um, I don't know what I'd do with her. Okay, um, she's... on a life pretty hard. But I got my money back. I, I got my money back. <clears throat> Yikes. <clears throat> I tried pickpocketing, but that wasn't a possibility. Am I the bad guy? Hey. Do you think there's anything in this room? Anyone caught pleasuring themselves in the library will be tethered to the book chains of... Okay, no, 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 no. A surgical bit? What's hiding here? What the heck is this place? A music box? A soap bar? A strapped choker. So tight. A black flare leather outfit. A minimalist leather binding that clings to the skin and creaks just the slightest bit when you move. Alright. Well, at least we didn't come for nothing. Excellent. All the lads, get to wear it. <laughs> Excellent, very good, very good look. Lads, enjoy. What a thirsty game. That's so funny though. Getting rejected in a v <laughs> for being too thirsty. Even the even the Baldur's Gate developers were like, "Yo, bro." This goes a little far. Do you think um, I should go talk to her brother? Oh, good morning, everyone. How goes it, Logo? <laughs> whoa, 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 bro! What the? F what did I just walk in on? Tell me, am I beautiful? More than beautiful. You are the aurora stretched across the north skies. You are the golden dunes swept across the Kalim. You are the fruit of the forbidden palm. Oh my god, Chet. No, we're not gonna do this. We're gonna. No, 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 no. Oh, I just got in here. Okay, okay. 
Your muscles shiver with her longing. Your Guys, I just found a key and I just opened a door. That's all I did. What's, what's wrong, Jara? What are you? Wait. I know you. Uh. Whoever you think I am, uh, you're mistaken. We're not picking two, Chet. Your face. The Absolute has shown me. Jaro, what's going on? Who's this man? <laughs> Your head screams in agony. The change has come. Tools boiling beneath your skin, your bones twisting, your flesh rupturing. Bro, is she? Silence. What's happening? This is my first ever brothel experience, guys. Is it normally like this? Because I, I find I find all of this a little strange. Where do we go from here? But like maybe this is how it norm. This is pretty standard. Okay. Hello. You okay? Hells. I'd heard tales of mind flayers. Talons sharp as daggers and tentacles yet more fearsome. But no tail did just So just to clarify, if I didn't have the nudity setting set the way I have. Floats like a this place would have looked a little different, right? Blood shimmers like silver. Oh, not actually? Oh, okay. One word, yuck. So the critics have said of Faerun's greatest masterpieces. I'm not so cold-hearted, nor so short-sighted. Oh, okay, okay. Your gaze intensifies. Your breath quickens and your heart skips a beat. The woman's senses are heightened and her fire stoked. The mind I thought she was just gonna maybe be like, yo, thanks for saving my life. But she's straight back to business, huh? The creature aroused you? What the? No, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> May you have some comfort in bitter times. I'm done here, bro. I am so done in this place. Be beautiful. Be well, be beautiful. Oh, all right, all right. Um, I recommend that to you too, Chad. Be well. Be beautiful. Let's refresh all of our spell points. Okay. Oh god, something happened again. My beard is glitching out. What's happened this time around? They say that home is where a person can be their truest selves. Bro, put without on a shirt! Without Jeez! Pretense. Why are you naked? You did well to see off the Kithyanki who had invaded mine. And now that you have seen where I come from, you know all there is to know about me. At least. Is this is this one the very first of the romance I options? I myself on completion of my first adventure. The garments with which I concealed and later constructed my appearance as the emperor. I am morbidly curious. We spoke of my relationship with I'll be honest. Lynn Stillman. A story I have told <laughs> no one else. I have no more secrets from you. No need to resort to subterfuge. We are true allies now, working towards a common goal. What if he accidentally uh, eats my brain in a moment of passion, Chet? Would that be a problem? I r you really don't sound like a mind flayer. Just let it happen in that case. Yeah. Needs. The only way we were ever going to get close enough to, crimes. to destroy it. Was by working together, <laughs> but few would trust a mind flare. So I did what I had to to convince you. I studied you, 
Like, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my, my dwarf is also starting to grow out his own tentacles. He's only got three little, little, little thingies right now. Oh. You see that? Here's one little, like, look, I'm, I'm starting to grow him out. We're, we're, you know, I, I'm trying my best. He did catfish me, yeah. He said he was a beautiful elfish girl, and it turns out it's, it's this, uh, tentacle thing. But, um, you know what? I consider that a, a perk. I, I don't think that's, like, if, if, is it still a catfish? If it's even better? It's, it's a reverse catfish. Like, maybe, may, if he would have looked like this on the pictures, and then we would have gotten there, and it was a beautiful girl instead, then it would have been a catfish. Yeah. Clearly. Uh, yeah, it is vibrating a little bit. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature. It's pulsating. It's it's making some some movement. That you are complex and full of contradictions. I know. It was no easy task. But I had to persist. <laughs> it's I only the one on the top right of his face. To it's only this one. I anticipated the challenge. And I anticipated your resistance. Mate, your tentacle. What I didn't anticipate was how reasonable you would be. You it's not like a catfish, he was smurfing his Tinder account? But oh. you responded well to logic, to rational arguments, to cold hard He's facts. a 10 out of 10 pretending to be a 6? You saw straight to the core. I could have done with a little more coddling. I didn't get that impression. <laughs> and my calculations <laughs> are never wrong. Okay, alright, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm glad I got the nudity setting the way I, I have it set up, man. I feel like he would be butt naked. Or tentacle Sometimes naked. I, I feel like his tentacle like we would be dangling. Dancing our way towards something deeper. True? You know, this might be our last chance to explore the possibility of a deeper relationship. True! Is that something you want? Alright, Chet, is this something we want? Do we want to have... The back of your mind warms with a rush of feeling. The Emperor's feeling. Heat, care... I have not slept with anybody in this game. Oh my god. There's a, a Steam achievement for sleeping with this dude? What are we doing? Are we like in midair? <laughs> All right, Chet. Lean in towards it. Take its tentacle in your hand and invite it in or pull away. You will never play this game. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to have sex with the tentacle, man. Can everybody be quiet? I'm trying to watch. <laughs> Invite it in. What does that mean, chat? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my finger on the out button just to switch to the out of scene because I, I okay. Here we go. What what are we? <laughs> Oh no, he's gonna eat my brain. You feel its breath merging. Did I grab the one that was vibrating? Cold, smelling faintly of vanilla and garlic. Its breathing quickens as you pull in close to its face. Its excitement palpable. You pause a moment as a thought occurs to you. Where is a mind flayer's mouth? It's the thing it eats your head with, dude! If this creature is at all similar to an octopus, failed it history. To be, its mouth is probably somewhere under You could literally the see it. My character is not very observant at all. No. Kiss the tentacle and hope that it's an erogenous event. <laughs> Just crush your fingers. Hope that. Here I go. 
Oh, come on. Come on. No, no. Jeez. Get it off my screen. Oh, okay, he's done. He's done. He's done. He's done. He's done. Why are you guys all saying two? Do it again? Oh, God. <laughs> this is so weird. This is worse than the bear sex scene. <laughs> God damn it. What is going on? Can it end? Can it end? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Oh god. Chat, um I don't know how reasonable it is to broadcast this. Let's just say the tentacles are going in multiple places. Oh my god. Show us loco, we can tell you if it's safe. We're having a very close moment. Um, one of the tentacles is now going around my shoulders and around my back. And it is trailing down um, the body of my dwarf. Oh, now there's... Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, we've gone away together. We've gone away together. Okay. I wasn't sure exactly how much it was going to show. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, <laughs> are you naked? Like, what? What is going on right now? Have you ever dreamt of and more? The single greatest experience of your life. Pleasure upon pleasure, as mind and body intertwined. Oh, dude. It was hard to tell where thoughts ended and feelings began. You can read the Emperor's expression better now that you've connected on a deeper level. <laughs> you know, it feels the same Christ. way. <laughs> There's a leaf! <laughs> I didn't notice the leaf. There was... It seems that had oh, shit. allowed what? you to share more than you would have liked with your companions. Whoa, whoa! I said I'd protect you from the absolute. That Maybe was a leaf. Try. It's okay. It's like one of those Greek statues, you know, where like they didn't bother chiseling out the wiener Come. and instead they just put a leaf there. It's time to get dressed. <sighs> we have work to do. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 okay. Two business then. Oh, jeez. Oh, good thing I switched away. What the heck? All right. The Elder Brain's hive mind has grown to monstrous proportions. And through the crown's magic, it has completely. Loco, tell us what happened. Over each Let's just say my dwarf is very hairy all over. It was intelligent before, but now. That was more than I really needed to know. Across the city. It is well on its way to becoming indestructible. We must stop it while we still can. Before we too. Become its slaves. Ay, 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 ay. So was this all a dream or like what just I don't know. Did I get my spell points back? That's really all I was trying to do. It was in the dream realm, yeah. That was more graphic than I thought it was gonna be, even with the nudity filter on. So just to clarify, I have this setting on. I don't know. Anyways, there's a nudity setting that you can toggle on or off. Full nudity is on by default in this game. The main reason I bought Starfield? Ooh, this guy made... The Brood War Hyperion. Actually pretty cool. Oh. Okay. I uh, don't know why that is on the subreddit, but... Sure. Micro like potato. This is why I'm not masters. Float 10,000 minerals, quote-unquote, sick micro, gold league. It's got 103 comments. 
I'm sure these comments will be very reasonable. Let's have a quick little peek. I don't know what I expected. Yeah. Nuclear bonk detected. Who approved this? This fanbase is too horny. GGG was right. Every gaming fanbase is too horny, dude. I think I think that's basically every gaming fanbase. Yeah. This is such a good meme, dude. I'm, I'm glad that people are starting to call people out. Yeah. I like I like these type of memes. Let me see if your middle ear is working. Toad, Luigi, Bowser, and Wario were up to no good. They were playing a game called Toad Chalice and in the middle of them was a silver cup. The cup would hold the nut. But, whoever was the last to fill the chalice had to down the mushroom chowder. Okay. Bowser was the first to blow. Okay. <laughs> is this from Artosis' stream? Is there like a collection of these copy pastas somewhere out there? Or do people actually write these f things from scratch? I don't understand. Like, where do they come from? Are, are there a bunch of StarCraft gamers out there that spent the entire day writing Mario Erotica? Only for Artosis to go live and then copy paste it into chat? Is this what guys are doing at work? They're like writing f poetry? It's like a Mario fanfic. It really is. It is kind of amazing though. Because there's a lot of unique ones. He acknowledged it as poetry. Oh, absolutely. So wait, do you write this from scratch, Antidiarrhea? Because like the Artosis viewers really have nailed the, the TOS and where the line gets crossed, right? Because they know, they know Artosis will skip it if it's, you know, a step too far. So they they have they have skated the line very nicely about what they can and cannot do. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. Work is work. I'm starting a fanfic union. There it is. Do you think um, Bing can write me a uh, Mario fanfic? Okay, actually, I was gonna request it to write a Mario Erotica fanfic for me, but I think that might be a bad idea. That might actually cross the line. Not gonna do that. That could backfire real fast. <laughs> no, that's definitely a bad idea, Chad. You can do it if you want to. You cross the line while Artosis is in the middle of combat. Artosis has got a foot pedal. He told me about the foot pedal that he uses to skip text-to-speech. Like, cause, cause people were getting clever about it, right? Like, they would write these really f***ed up Mario fanfics and then donate while he was in the middle of an engagement. And he couldn't switch away and all tap out and all that to skip the donation message. So he got a foot pedal to skip the text-to-speech. I think that's what I ex uh, what he explained. I'm fairly sure that's what it came down to. So he's... Literally suffering from success. That's so funny though. He's got the stream deck foot pedal. That's so funny Innovation is driven by necessity <laughs> You gotta get your other limbs out in order to skip. That's so good. He used it many times on you It is kind of brilliant modern problems require modern solutions Mario erotica causes technological advancements. Yes. Innovation is driven by Mario Erotica. And I think that's beautiful. Okay. Everybody to the ground. We free Volo. And most importantly, we don't touch anything. It's not like we can get any loot from these people that we are gonna... No, 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 Loco. What the heck? <laughs> I could attack the chair. Okay, he glitches through the barrels. We save. Now we run to the... To the to the to the docks over here. Okay, excellent. We save Volo. Excellent. Uh, now we gotta go and figure out a way to get through here. Well, she's gonna be a Twitch chat favorite. I will save it here. This is where we'll continue next time. In the previous episode. This is gonna be for the next episode of Loco TV. Very nice. Thumbnail bait. There it is, dude. Anyways, apparently Geralt posted in Twitch chat. Is this the balance council? And I have, I, I think this is a glorious meme. I don't know why this hasn't made it to the StarCraft subreddit, because this is this is so good. <laughs> 
That's so funny. Is this the Velvet's Council? This is so good. If you want free karma, you should you should definitely post this. That's so good. It gets a 7 out of 8. I think this is a 9 out of 10 meme. Yeah. Because it's so good, especially as Harstam is like... Huh? Like, Harstam, you know, you can tell he's a Protoss player just from uh, the positioning of his arm. You can tell. Protoss players really do make it quite obvious. Do you have a minute to talk about our Lord and Savior? Ooh, that's a good point. Adepts are kind of like that obnoxious person that keeps knocking on your front door because you opened the door once in 2019 out of error. You accidentally were nice to stranger people that were trying to convert you to their religion. And now they still show up. I had that at some point um, when we first moved in here in 2018. So a bunch of Jehovah Witnesses showed up at my house and I was nice to them once. And then one other time, right, they showed up again and I'm like, okay, I'm not really interested in talking. And then another time after that, I think a couple weeks later, I saw them parking right in front of my door and they made a beeline straight to me. So like I was literally a name on a list and they were just going door to door to the people that were nice to them. So I told them I'm not interested and that they should take me off the list. And they uh, they were like, oh, we don't have a, oh, there's no such thing, there's no such thing. Anyways, I had to be a dick to people, even though I didn't want to be. Yeah, the alternative was hiding in my living room and pretending I wasn't home. And I contemplated that for a little bit, but I, I'm fairly sure they saw me. So, you know, yeah, very annoying. Will this Terran gaslight me into believing I could win this fight? Oh, I saw this. This is great. This is uh, Mr. Rotterdam making a uh, gaslighting analogy for Terran versus Protoss. That tank dies and you have three more guys. Yeah, yeah. It's like as a Protoss, you get really hopeful. You're like, wow, my blink stocks are doing really good. But then it turns out there's another tank and then you blink forward. But then there's a widow mine and two marauders and you lose seven stalkers. And you're like, man. Did the Terran just gaslight me into believing I could win this fight? Yes! That's absolutely what happened! Oh. <laughs> I could not have timed it any better! Oh my goodness! This is the greatest commentary moment of my life! <laughs> <laughs> it's very true though. Protoss versus Terran, man. Feels good, dude. Look, have you seen this? Oh no, Gabe is linking something. No, I had not seen it and I kind of wish I hadn't. What's going on? What is this? Cute? This is cute? How is this cute? Oh god. Triv Hugo, hello wonderful people. Did you Lobby switch the ears? A -A 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 <laughs> you switch the ears between me and little Toby? I don't know about that one. I don't I don't know about that one. Oh god. Are you guys furry shaming me right now? Bro. It's 2023, chat. You can't do that. Hello. Graphic design is my passion. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I looked at this and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. <sighs> Graphic design truly is your passion, isn't it? Thank you very much, Echo Steel, for the 82 months. He says, hi, Lenny. I'm really glad that we have some words privately. I just admire how wise you are with all the great advice. He then also gave a sub to Echo Steel. Wait, no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to read chat notifications and I'm looking at the screen all at the same time. Echo Steel gave a sub to himself. Wow. And then also to the Hunter. But yeah, okay. They look better on him. You even scaled them a little bit to be more in line with my head. One thing that kittens have, at least our kittens always had, is that they were... Like their faces were never quite... Is this a normal thing for kittens? I feel like their ears are way too big for their face. Looks fine. I feel like his ears are still as big as they are right now, to be honest. Like, as they are in this picture, I mean. Obviously, Toby is much older now. You're still getting your ass kicked by Melania? Oof. I thought you were supposed to be a Sekiro god, Pete. Weren't you flexing about Sekiro being way harder than Dark Souls and all that? And now you're struggling on Elden Ring? Ha 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 ha! Good, good, very good, very good. Suffer, as we have suffered. I am Melania, sword of Mikula. Hey Pete, hesitation is defeat. <laughs> Just don't hesitate, bro. Have you considered not hesitating? God, I really need to tell you everything here. You beat her with a mimic and a Kamehameha? That's true. 
I did use both the Mimic as well as the Kamehameha. I used the tools that the game gave me. I know. I'm kidding, though. Melania is a very difficult boss. The fact that she heals is so poor. <laughs> this is one of the hardest bosses in any Soulsborne game ever. And she has this vampiric ability where she heals every time she hits you. You're like, come on, Elden Ring. That was bullshit, dude. The answer is just don't get hit. Yeah, just don't get hit and kill her before, you know, she kills you. It's easy. And her timings are very whack as well, right? Like all of her abilities kind of hit at what seems like a random timing. It takes a long time to figure out. But she's an optional boss. So at least, you know, that's a thing. But in the mind of a Dark Souls player, optional bosses are only optional when they're easy. Just play like Serral, though. Yeah. Just, just don't fail. I mean, I feel like it's quite obvious, really. Like, so, you know when you play the game and you make a mistake? Just don't make... Just don't... Just... Just don't do that. For example, right? Sometimes you'll be fighting a boss in that game. And you'll find yourself getting hit. Don't. Very good advice, no? Homeless? Buy a house. Don't have money? Don't be poor. You're welcome, guys. I'll be here all day. <laughs> you didn't think of that? See? Yeah. Don't have a girlfriend? Just get married. <laughs> what is this? Yo, I'm scrolling up in the Patreon group chat. How many veins do you want to have? Wait, why are you guys talking about my... God. That's a lot of veins, dude. What the f*** is he, my grandpa? Dude, what the f*** is going on? <laughs> I don't know, chat! What part of that is, is, that's, that's my right hand. That's my, that's this hand, right? My hand looks no more normal on video now, okay? These are strong hands for old school RuneScape, yeah. These are gamer hands. Is Loco really playing RuneScape? I was playing RuneScape at Home Story Cup, yeah. God, it does look really cursed, holy crap, man! I look like my grandpa. Well, when he was alive anyways. Not ideal. I don't know what's going on, guys. But yeah, I am doing, uh, if you want to know where I am. Yo, can any Giga Chats in the chat actually tell where I am currently located in RuneScape? If you can tell where this is, I'd be very impressed. It is kind of hard to tell. Motherload Mine? Yo! There it is! Two gamers in the chat. Recognize. The Motherload Mine. It is the motherload mine. It really is. Ah, this is what I'm trying to learn right now. Hold up, let me see. I started learning this, I think about two weeks ago. It is uh, only the first part of the song though. This is uh, Silver League Loco. Legs? There are legs here, yeah. I like this song a lot. It's just my hands. <laughs> Anyways, practicing, practicing, making some progress. What's wrong with my hands? I don't know, guys. I have veiny hands, apparently. Do you guys not have, like, veins in your hand? It does look kind of cursed, dude. My hands do look a little cursed here. I have gotten a couple operations done, and I remember the nurse, whenever they like have to put the thing in your hand, I, I got a compliment on my hands at some point from the nurse because I was so easy to stab with a needle. Yeah, very easy apparently to, uh, they stabbed me right here. There's like this little, this little like spot where the, the veins join up together. Yeah, maybe it's a StarCraft players thing. I noticed this when, you know, what, like those, those pictures? Of like the pro gamers whenever they're at like tournaments and they always have the pro gamers stand there like Like where they always stand like that, right? I always notice that the pro gamers have very muscular forearms I think I think a lot of Starcraft players probably have Yeah, probably some strange looking hands as well. I wouldn't be surprised that has nothing to do with the game they play I think so. It's a lot of porn. <laughs> yeah, Starcraft players just uh, you know a lot of my masturbating going on so very muscular forearms 
Let me see if I can find a photo of that on what I'm talking about. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of an example. We had these pictures, for example, from uh, I am Karavitsa. Like in this photo, Cyril's forearms are as big as his upper arms. I guess if this is forearm, that must be back arm, right? Anyways, there are there are more extreme variants of this, but I, I always I don't know. If you pay attention to this, you'll probably notice it at some point at a StarCraft tournament. All the pro gamers, for some reason, have well, not for some reason, but they have uh, they're like Popeye, basically. Most pro players are pretty fit, yeah. They hide their veiny hands. <laughs> Excuse me? A lost little mouse is running through the house. Whoa! That's not what I expected. A thief in the night, greedy and here to take. Why are you here, little thief? It really does remind me a little bit of, uh, of The Hobbit now, though. You're looking, uh... Very skimpy. Raphael? Ha! No. You will have a far crueler master than Raphael soon. Oh, God. But what inspired you to pay... Bro, what are you wearing? Visit? I won't tell you. No, I will tell him, actually, I seek the Orphic Hammer. Hmm. Raphael all but spent himself to get that hammer. And you want to take it off him? This is you have that same outfit? Whatever. Really? I need to do. Why don't we play a game? You win, I give you everything you desire. <laughs> but you'll enjoy yourself more if you lose. Okay. It's a surprise. What's the game? Off. I do not want to take off my clothes. Absolutely not. I mean, I am morbidly curious what happens if I pick option one, but I really, like, this This place does... Every time, dude, I... For some reason, every time I'm nice to a dude in the game, they want to sleep with me right away. Everybody always wants to sleep with my character when I'm nice to them. How is that a problem, Loco? Fine, I'll quick save and choose option one. Guild is a fruit. Oh no. I don't wanna if this gets too weird, I am quick loading right away. And you get to live. This might be my only way to you know survive. You better know it. I am Harlot, Raphael's personal incubus. Glamoured. And transfigured to look like him. Wait, this guy likes to sleep with himself? <laughs> that is such a Raphael thing. This guy's like, I need the perfect dude. It's me. <laughs> His violating stare sees more than all of you. It sees. Oh, jeez. Fuck. There's a leaf. We're God. That came out of nowhere. Oh god. No, no, no. No butt shot. No butt shot. If there's a butt shot, I'm quick loading instantly. Raphael will ask me to change into the Hold up. Duchess, Raphael. Hold up. I can take her form if you choose. A simple swap pales in comparison to what you are about to do for me. What is option 1? Are you kidding me? This game is so thirsty, man. Like, I like to play games a little thirsty just for the memes, but this game goes uncomfortably far. Is this what it's like in Belgium? I'm gonna go with option five. I've had enough of your sick game, demon. Ugh, an impotent finale for I'm an done. impotent show. Come in this one. Hey, she does stay in this form. Ay 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 ay. What a game though, man. You can play this game in such a nasty way. Like you you can you can play this game only after dark, okay? Basically going around sleeping with literally everything that walks, which is kind of awesome. Wait, am I still naked? No! Oh dude, I have taken off all my gear. Ah jeez. 
I'm wearing my, uh, oh no, wait, not my, I'm wearing Jaira's underwear. Because it's embroidered with little ducks. Anyways, it's gonna take a while to re-equip. Maybe I can do this fight with just a small group of people, though. <laughs> Ethereal escape? Ah, fun. I called this game thirsty? I mean... It's kind of cool that it's possible, to be fair. Alright, Gil. I need you to use your big boy hit. No! Not the f How is the hitbox of the water elemental seven times the size of the f water elemental? I've had this happen like four times now. Actually super annoying though. The water elemental's hitbox goes about this big. It goes way- like I did not ho like I am not hovering over him right now. Look at this. So this- this is where I'm still- you see my mouse cursor? This is where I'm still selecting my water elemental. Super annoying, dude. With haste. I can only cast Disintegrate once with my spell point and once with my weapon. So I can only cast it once. That sucks. All right, it's gonna take a while. I'm a little afraid I'm gonna have to fight. Um, Another fight. Let's go. I'm gonna have to fight the other guy as well. What's his name? We'll get redressed in like 20 turns. Raphael. If I have to fight Raphael, I'm gonna be in some trouble. Okay. Hey. I can also... Okay. I can keep his underwear. Can I switch it out? Oh, no. Okay, we'll I have to see what it looks like later, guys. Fine. <laughs> oh, no. Jeez, man. That is an outfit. That, that is... That is my naughty dwarf outfit, yeah. Maybe wash him first, Loco? No, 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 we paid extra. You can steal people's underwear in this game and then wear it on your character. Actually insane. Uh, I'm currently in a Zerk versus Zerk. This is by far my worst matchup. Feel pretty good against Protals, feel pretty good against Terran. Don't feel so good about my Zerk versus Zerk. I was brave enough, apparently, though, to open up with a hatch first. Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, fuck this matchup sometimes, I swear. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I guess I'll cancel this. I guess I can get link speed going, but I don't think it's really gonna do me any good. We're gonna have to f oh jeez, whoa. Okay, this is a version of this build that I am not familiar with, guys. Does this seem like a problem to you? All? How many workers? Did what? What did he just do? Hold up! Is this? Is this? I could have easily been in a much better position than I actually am. So my link speed actually turns out to be pretty nice. So he can make Bane links here, which is something to be worried about. How many workers does he have? Okay, he's getting link speed himself right now. I think I'm actually just gonna put down a Roach Warren or something. I feel like that's safer. <sighs> I don't have a lot of faith in my current Ling Bane micro capabilities. Okay. Guess I've just so beautifully shown for you.
I should check for proxy hatcheries? There's no way that he's got a proxy hatchery here. Okay, I've got a good enough economy here. I think he's just gonna go for one big push. He does have link speed coming. That was a very strange build. What in the world was his early game like? So he did a... He did a spine crawler rush with Banelings. Just saying it sounds weird. So he went 12-11. So what I thought I saw was three drones moving out, which is what I saw. But I thought it was the tail end of it. I thought he sent like multiple waves of drones and I just missed the first one because he sent them in a weird way or whatever. Um... It was just three drones, though. Like, nobody rushes three drones in a bailing nest. Nasty splits? What's up, Rainer? Did you see my sick micro? Dude, if you want some coaching, let me know. That was pretty sick. I agree, dude. I only lost, like, on average, four Zerklings per bailing. That was pretty sick. What a build. Are creep tumors an animal or a structure? When the creep expands, we see a worm-like thingy that leaves the old creep tumor or a nest-looking thing and spawns a new nest. I always think that they are parasitic worms that the queen shit out, like when they take medicine for- You think they're parasitic worms that the queens just have inside of them? I've never considered that. Yeah, yeah, they're more like sea sponges, that's true, but... Hmm... Zeratul diorama is done? Yo... That is awesome, man. Look at that. That's actually really cool. Is Zeratu a plant or an animal? I think he's kind of like a creep tumor. Look at that. That's actually really sick. He's got a glow in the dark. Like he's got one of those rave party, uh, you know those glow sticks? That's the color. I feel like the color is slightly off. It's- it's a little too neon, but that looks awesome. Is Zeratul a Bulbasaur? Bulbasaur! I don't think Zeratul is a Bulbasaur, no. But good question right there, response. I saw this one posted yesterday morning. Look at this, look at this. It keeps going. So his PS is three paragraphs. Now my favorite part about it is that one of the comments, I asked ChatGPT for a summary. The author passionately pleads with Blizzard to unlock unused content in StarCraft 2. They argue that there's a wealth of discarded content including unique units and structures, which could be used to create multiple new campaigns and experiences within the StarCraft 2 universe. They acknowledge the company's concerns about modders potentially using this, con uh, this content, but suggest that it could generate revenue through new campaigns, premium arcade maps and skins, while also serving as free advertising. The author highlights that some older content can still be relevant, as evidenced by Heroes of the Storm using updated StarCraft 2 models. They encourage Blizzard to invest in developing and releasing new content, even if it initially aimed at a niche audience, as it could be more profitable than leaving it unused. <laughs> That's amazing though, That's so useful. And then there's somebody over here. I asked for a shorter summary. Author urges Blizzard to unlock StarCraft 2's unused content for new experiences, revenues, and relevant. Or relevance, rather. That's pretty sick. Even shorter, unlock StarCraft 2 content for profit. Pretty amazing. So, I noticed this guy in this in this thread is basically everybody who's saying, Yo, bro, what are you doing? He's, he's very defensive about it. Like, there's a lot of downvoted comments of him. <laughs> where he's responding to everybody, and <laughs> he's all responding. With loads of XDs and loads of like, oh no, you're wrong type of content. It's kind of amazing. I didn't read his thesis. No, I did not read his thesis. Do you think um, teachers also use this sort of tool? You just put somebody's entire thesis into a, a chat GPT to summarize it? Like, I don't want to read 90 pages. Just give me a short summary. 
Is this a passing grade? Can you give that? Can you give Chat GPT that that question? Yeah, Chat GPT, please grade this paper, bro. Actually, actually reasonable. You could have a universal standard for what quality should look like. <laughs> Technically speaking, it would be pretty sick. But did you see that Mercedes has these bouncing SUVs? Did you see that video? <laughs> no, I did not. No, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Like if they have the SUV and if you're like like stuck in the sand or in the mud, it, the car starts to bounce so you can get out of there. So like those muscle cars from yes. back in the day. Yes, yes. <laughs> and naturally, people are just bouncing like like they're driving through the street, just bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've not seen that. So wait, you cool. just had like a software error on your car and it just shut down in the middle of the street. Exactly. It's the second time it happened. First time it happened, I was on the middle of the highway. And then, you know, you're in the middle of the highway, police came, and then I brought it to the to the garage and said, yeah, you need a software update. So why the f*** does it shut itself off? Why not say, <laughs> you need a software <laughs> update? Yes. Uh, I hate that car. Oh, wow. Okay. You'd imagine yeah, if it yeah. needs the software update that badly, it would, <laughs> yeah. you know, install it overnight or something. Like, that doesn't sound something. that complex. I could probably yeah. push it over data, but... <laughs> oh, I think Gabe linked me the video. Yeah, look Wait, at it. It's cool, cool cars. The Maybach, Maybach GLS 600. Oh my god. <laughs> this guy's just driving along, bouncing his car. So wait, the, the feature is supposed to be for getting out of mud? Yeah, look, I can I can send you the link with that. With the, there's a cool like little 10 second video. I'll show it to you. It's really cool. Let me just uh, look at it real quick. But that sounds genuinely dangerous, though, man. Like, the fact you got stuck like that, that's crazy. Wow. It is. It is. And uh, that's why I don't like the car anymore. Look at this. That's the one. Do I need this? That's the question. That's the question in the video title. <laughs> Do you need this? A jumping mode to s rescue a stuck car from sand and mud. Yes, you see how it works. Oh, that's clever. Yes, it is, right? Yeah, but nobody uses it like that, obviously. <laughs> You just see people bouncing <laughs> in the street. That's actually kind of awesome. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, the original feature is cool. I don't think... Uh, it's probably one of those yes. features you forget you have when you are actually stuck, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh -oh. Yeah. Suspensions are gonna get pretty fast. Really? You think it's bad? I don't know. I feel like Mercedes must know what they're doing if they release features like that. Because you're basically begging to go fire on the internet. <laughs> that's awesome no I, I yeah this is the first time I'm hearing of it that's cool your old university does this with the tram wait you have a city tram that can bounce I know that you had these old school cars like the, the muscle cars and stuff that can bounce but yeah but that was never allowed in Germany it was not street legal no I can imagine it wasn't over here either how I feel when I work out listening to the Zork soundtrack <laughs> what he becomes the giga chat Transform yourself into the ultimate life form? Really? To the Zerk music? I mean, it's not bad, but... French Harstem isn't real, he can't hurt you. French Harstem? En général, je pense que le MP est trop puissant. Je pense que le fantôme est trop fort dans StarCraft 2 actuellement, et idéalement, une partie de sa puissance devrait être transférée... Is this AI? This is f***ing AI, isn't it? There's no way Harstem's French is that good. I don't believe- I don't believe that is- Does he actually speak French? The French sounds weird. ...d'autres domaines de l'armée Terran. Je pense que c'est vraiment assez difficile à faire, mais petit à petit, des mesures sont prises. Réduction légère du rayon sur le Ghost. Snipe moins efficace contre le travail également. Donc, une certaine puissance est en train d'être retirée du fantôme et si nécessaire, pourrait être essayé d'être stocké ailleurs. No way! There's no way this is real. I don't. It is an AI generated trend. Okay. Okay. It's got a Canadian accent. I see. Okay. Holy <laughs> dude. I was 2023 Lemonade Arst. Dude, that would be mental though. If this guy has been speaking fluent French this entire time. It's so hard to tell though. Dans l'armée Terran. Yeah, you can see the microphone glitching out. C'est quelque chose que j'aimerais vraiment. Quelques changements intéressants pourraient améliorer l'expérience de jeu. Donc vous pourriez faire en sorte que le ghost est une sorte de dégât sur la durée. Je pense que avec So wait, somebody downloaded the video, uploaded it and re like trans it gave it the translated 
Storm, ce serait cool que les premiers tics de dégâts infligent moins de dégâts et plus tard. Ça That's plus. so good though. So the voice is AI, but the video is AI too, but the original source material is Harstom's translated? Like it's changing the mouth shape and everything. Like it's glitching because of the mic? Storm inflige 80 dégâts répartis de manière égale dans le temps pour l'instant. Donc 20 dégâts. Dude, that is kind of creepy though, man. Look, I figured out how you can stream on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can just, uh, you know, I can just do Dutch videos and get them translated to English. So, what's going on, Outros? Thank you for the nine. Welcome. Ou quelque chose comme ça. Imaginez que le premier deuxième fait yeah, 5 the dégâts, mic is puis le deuxième deuxième But fait... I didn't notice that it was glitching out when it was this small. Prend 10 dégâts, puis ça augmente, et enfin le dernier deuxième fait un total de 40 dégâts. Yeah, I saw an AI cover of Justin Bieber singing some sort of song. And I actually couldn't tell if it was real or not. And like, I, I could only find out that it was AI by looking at the, uh, the comments or whatever. Like, it was 100% convincing. Cart yeah, Cartman sings, bring me to life. <laughs> Very true, dude. Those videos are, are out there. Am I an AI right now? I could be. The thing is, dude, you can still sort of tell the signs, but we're not far off. Like, you could show this to my grandma for sure, and she would never figure it out. And it's almost her birthday, so it'd be very mean of you to lie to her. No, but genuinely though, if you like, make this like one of those classic 240p type of quality videos, it'd be very hard to see. AI girl dancing has almost reached its peak. I haven't seen any of that. Could you link me some of that for, uh, for research? That'd be great. I mean, not right now, but like, reality is in trouble, yeah. Ran into this Protoss Grandmaster the other day. He kept screaming about how Naniwa is the true king in the north. 28 APM. <laughs> That's his license plate? 28 APM? Very nice. <laughs> it's not bad, dude. Harstam on speaking French? I've already, uh... I, I mean... I know there's like like things like uh, revenge porn laws where you can just or uh, like you can just deep fake that type of stuff either that's like illegal you know. I also believe, truly believe that it should be illegal to make other people speak French in a way that is much more damaging for my reputation <laughs> than having some deep fake porn being produced. True, it's, it's dude. Insane what it does to you. Big true. Thanks everyone on Reddit for your balance suggestions. Here's the new patch with all the changes made. This is the Reddit balance patch right over here, dude. If Reddit was in charge, we'd have Hagelslag on a pizza. You know what I mean? All right, let's have a look. Since the US president himself agreed that the balance council is doing a bad job, I thought I'd suggest changes myself. Marines, cost 100 minerals. Has limited ammo supply of 12 shots. Widowmind, Sentinel missile cannot only damage friendly units. Yeah. Ultralisk cannot only attack if the target is facing east. Yeah. This is great. Very nice. <gasps> Hello? That Gaden is humongous. It's almost unreal. Thankfully, it's chained. Let me escape this place, riding the current. Okay. Okay, so I have to get out because this thing should not be able to escape. The giant Gaden. Okay, um, I'm going to die if I get caught. Let's run. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, I didn't think you were gonna do that. No, 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 no! No, 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 no! Miss, miss, miss. Dude, you suck. Can't even... get a man with flippers and a wetsuit. Whoa, dude. The stalactites are falling. 
Oh jeez, I'm in a really bad spot here. Well, I've gotten hit 17 times, but... I think not getting hit is the goal, by the way, in case you're wondering right now. I know you may get a little bit confused here by watching my Grandmaster League gameplay. The phenomenal unit control. I think it's preparing for an attack. What do I do? It's a divine tree, sir. It hates... Okay. Hit it! Boom! Are you kidding me right now, bro? Are you... F <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll do that again. I'll do that again. I'll... Yeah, sure. Thank you, Traveler. Thank you very much for the two months. We're just about to first try it, actually. Oh, I had to aim. I didn't realize I had to aim. I didn't know what I was doing. Ah, there we go. We did it. We did it. First try. Didn't even struggle. Okay. Oh, no. Dave the dead. There's no way out. My goodness. Hey. Thank you, dude. Are you dead now? Swim into its mouth. I think it fainted. Oh. A path opened up. Okay. Let's run away before it wakes up. Um, we must be so deep right now. What a disgusting creature. Let's run away. Now we're doing the same thing, but vertically. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. It's kind of fast. Oh, jeez. My eyes are glazing over. It's like playing a rhythm game now. Don't worry, though, Chet. I am the trombone champ. I am the horde lord. The, no, the horn lord. I, I know. I know how to do rhythm games. Because I did one for three days, once in my life. Yeah, they don't make wetsuits like the one that I'm wearing. Did I lose the creature? What is this vibration? Lost it. Uh, wait, it fell underwater. Okay, keep going. I got some vegetable, uh, some vegetable sushi to serve tonight. There's a VIP coming. None of these people in the sushi restaurant know the problems that I am facing during the daytime, just to give them some fresh fish every night, or in this case, vegetables. Anyways. They have no idea, man. Oh. Smooth. Was this an Undertale reference? Uh, I did play Undertale. I play Undertale in the most cursed way ever, though. I must barricade the entrance before the Ganon comes after me. Yeah, you thought my Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough was cursed? If you haven't seen my... Uh, I mean, I played that game years and years and years ago. I don't know if it really counts anymore, but... I did play it in a very cursed way. Let's just say I did not take... <gasps> oh, I didn't think I could fail. I thought I was done with that area. I mean, it was pretty hard to fail, to be honest. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Dave! Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. We crushed its hand. 
This game really is Gen Z in a nutshell, right? Isn't it? This is like the TikTok Generations game. Wait. Really? Is it like TikTok with auto scroll on? Humans are not that trustworthy. You would have already been eaten for the okay by the deep sea fish. Were I not there for you? Thank you, man. I didn't imagine this place would be this cold. You helpless human. You do not have any gear or clothes to protect your body from the cold? Okay. Let's return to the village. You see that huge mirror in the back? Activate it again and you will be whisked away to the village. Okay. Grab the lever on the right, human. Bro, she's a little toxic, I'm not gonna lie. Mark 1 comes out today? Wait, Mark 1 what? Oh, Mortal Kombat 1. Oh yeah, the first ever Mortal Kombat game is coming out, guys. Pretty hyped for it, man. We can access this place straight away from the village. Oh shit, okay. Nice. Your tail has been shaking for some time. Are you really all right? Bro, I uh, don't know what this means. Ah, she also is cold, I see. What are you guys fighting with? Are you guys fighting with your own arm? Is that your own arm you're using as a weapon? Oh god, I think it is! Maybe I fought these guys already for a while. This guy doesn't even have a head anymore. Dude, I am getting destroyed by just the randomest of enemies here. That's not a word. He's armed and dangerous? Ay Careful, Loco, he's armed. If I ever run out of weapons in real life and it's really desperate, could I pull out my own arm and then use that? Or do you think that would be a bad strategy? Because I use my arms quite a bit, personally. I can use my PR gun. That's always an option. I agree. As a, as a, as a fighting tool. One day, Snow White pushed Pinocchio to the ground. Oh, come on, that? Sorry, I had to read that twice before. No! No, that sounds like a text-to-speech to me. I am not gonna text-to-speech that with my own speech. Wait. Yeah. I started rereading it. I figured it was Motlesses, you know, so like how how bad could it really be? There goes my family friendly show. Sold. One day, Snow White pushed Pinocchio to the ground, sat on his face, and screamed, Tell a lie, tell the truth, tell a lie, tell the truth, at Molises. <laughs> really? One day. Snow White pushed Pinocchio to the ground. Okay, yes. Face, and screamed, tell a lie, tell the truth, tell a lie, tell the truth. Thank you very much, guys, for the 600 bits. In time, we will be full Artosis. Yeah, in time. I think Artosis makes a good chunk of money every day off of his text-to-speech donations, though. So, you know, I probably should never feel bad. Yeah, we should get some text-to-speech for a Bible verse. I agree, dude. house of this chat definitely is very cursed and could use a little bit of guidance. You're always welcome. <gasps> Gamer. No! What?! Bro, what did I even do? I just stood there. Okay, I've been playing this game for coming up on six hours now, and you can really start to tell that I have been. Um, this is not my finest gameplay. <gasps> no! Oh, dude, 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 dude! This area is. Uh... Can I run this? You think I make it? No! No! Oh, for f There's a gap! It's a two button, like, it's a two button press for jumping in this game. Just like the From Software games. Which is so f***ing annoying. So you gotta be running, and then you gotta press this button. 
So like this little thingy, this controller, this joystick, you can click it and then you jump. So you have to run. It's a two button combination. Yeah, I'm only used, like as a Zork player, only, my only two button combination is F2 and A. Anything that goes past that is too complex for me, man. Oh wait, oh wait, I play, no, I play Zerk. Actually, Zerk uses a lot of O army, yeah. I should use Spacebar. That's what they did in uh, Mass Effect, huh? Everything Spacebar, dude. I love Spacebar, it's my favorite button. It's large, it's big. Those are synonyms. That's a shiny over there too, guys. That wasn't the way. Uh, I I mean, I can't go and walk over there and check, right? Like, if I do, I get smacked and sweeped off the floor. Gravity is, again, the most dangerous enemy in any of these games. Lies of PP, dude. More like Lies of P game designers. Yeah, you always have to have a section like this in your game, and then there has to be like a Blight Town section as well. Although, to be fair, in the remastered edition of Dark Souls 1, the Blight Town area wasn't nearly as annoying. I think literally the only thing that changed that I noticed was that the game didn't lag like every time you got there. <laughs> Playing at a smooth frame rate made all the difference. My P organs, Kenneth. I love grinder and my P organ. Those are two of my favorite things. This is a genuine mechanic in this game. It's called upgrading your P organ. I am not even joking you. When we get back to the hotel, I'll show you. It does have a bit of a, an interesting name. I'm gonna show- no, I'm gonna upgrade my P-Organ when- When we get to the hotel. I got a room so I can show you my P-Organ, chat. What are you trying to say right now? This is a normal thing, people do this every day. I'm inviting you to the hotel to come and upgrade my P-Organ, yes! My Porgan. But I feel like Porgan is an even nastier name than P-Organ, so... Ooh, the bone cutting saw blade and handle. Oh, dude, that looks awesome. I showed you my P organ, please respond. No, 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 no. Don't go around sending pics of your P organ, chat. Your P organ. Should I go and back off right now, or am I gonna run around with one HP? I it's a I. T <laughs> I was gonna say I think this is a bad idea. I'm back, Loman. <sighs> Thank you, Ragasito. Thank you so much, man. Ragasito, don't make fun of me, okay? Whatever you do. I know you wouldn't, but like hypothetically speaking, when in break, your character HP. Recovery through pulse cells immediately decreases. Use a purification ampoule. Yeah, thank you, game. Thank you for reminding me after I died, you son of a... Hello. Dude. Why am I struggling against these ladies? Why are you swinging the wrong way? Sorry. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. You were supposed to just die? Honestly? Cleaning ladies are OP, man. Are you kidding me right now? Did I? Okay. I'm not proud of that one. This is why you don't have a cleaning lady. I get it. Do you clean yourself though? Nah, you don't do that either, right? I like to see the dust whenever I move around my home. It's kind of a fun little mini game I play. My whole home is just covered in cat hair. Loco, a millionaire, he can obviously afford a cleaning lady. Loran doesn't like it when I call her that. No, chat, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a, it's a joke, chat. I thought I was a billionaire. Didn't you guys determine that I was a billionaire? When did I become a millionaire? I didn't realize I got downgraded. Oh, I invested in crypto and became a billionaire? Or I think if you, yeah, no, I actually, yeah, yeah, I must have been a billionaire in the past, but then I got crypto. What's this, Muck? Is this still going on? God, this stream has been running for months now. This is AI Trump versus AI Biden. <laughs> you can donate to give them subjects to talk about, which is really kind of a brilliant concept. And maple syrup, really Trump? 
Are we supposed to believe that you're some kind of sticky superhero fighting off beavers single-handedly? Give me a break. Your diet is probably 90 Big Macs and Diet Coke. <laughs> I highly doubt you've ever touched anything as natural as real maple syrup. Now let's talk about these squirrel armies. <laughs> let's talk about squirrel armies? All right. Yeah, that channel is something special. Apparently it's run by Athene. Remember Athene from years and years ago? So they've been they've been having an AI debate for a long time and the channel used to get tons of views. Now it's kind of like, you know, far less than when it first was cuz you know, it's kind of a a funny thing. Either people are like, "Ha, that's great. Try not to laugh." This is one of the top clips from that channel. Let's see. And can someone please explain to me the meaning behind choo 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 <laughs> yes, yeah, I so could, I could, up, fair beast. I could explain that. You're about as useful as a Biden on Diablo Four. And as for Diablo Four being worth seventy dollars, give me a break, cocksmoker. That game will be hot garbage on release day. And not even my mother ice cream can fix that pile of horse. <laughs> my taste buds have seen. <laughs> was he wrong, Chet? I mean, it was pretty fun initially. It was pretty fun initially. Dark Brendan goes hard. All right. Well, he can sit back in his basement and watch the X Files reruns like the cowardly little man he is. Look, Jack. Trump's talking about space, but he doesn't know shit about shit. This guy couldn't even find Uranus with both hands let alone defend our planet from aliens. And as for you, trailer trash, what other f you think you're so f clever making fun of Pocahontas? Let me tell you something, asshole. The only crack baby around here is you. Oh, jeez. Your head stuck so far up your own ass that you're sh out diamonds. You want to talk about walls. How about we build a wall around your trailer park to keep your inbred ass from infecting the rest of the world? <laughs> huh? Whoa, and to all the rest whoa, of your whoa, whoa, Joe. What? What the f***, Joe? All right. The chat. God love you. That you can all go f*** yourselves with a cactus. In dark random time, bitches. Get <laughs> how about we build a wall around your trailer park? See, I don't know for how much, like, that AI is scripted and how much it comes up with itself. Yeah, yeah, if that debate ends up going like that, that would be amazing. That's so funny. Mm. 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 Very good. <laughs> All right, this weapon's going to be amazing. I'm I'm excited for it. You did 5 years of meth? I don't think I don't think that's 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 a great idea. Surprise cat. I wanted to do that. Okay, let's give it a try, chat. You ready? Okay. I wanted to meme him, but he already took too much damage for my initial thrust. <laughs> they walk into it. <laughs> it's actually kind of sick. He walked into it. Dude, it actually deals a lot of damage as well. It's called the drill gun. Wait, that's what it's called. The pistol drill gun? Oh, pistol, pistol rock drill. There you go. Close enough. Very interesting weapon, dude. Watch this. That's legit. I don't know if it's going to be any good in boss fights, but that is genuinely really nice. If humanity hadn't invented guns, a thrustable spear probably would have been the ultimate weapon in 2023. Okay, he's coming. Oh, okay, against a red attack, I can't do that. I'm out of stamina, but it's... <laughs> That's legit so good. I need to bring up my stamina, man. 
Hmm. Oh, yeah, we use spears for like millions of years, dude. Spears are uh, definitely the OP weapon for humans. In like, you know, PvE situations, spears are pretty awesome. When we switched to PvP, I guess spears were still pretty great, though. Is there anything over here? Death. Death is what's over there. I do not really like the idea of that. No. We'll just keep following the path up and we'll try and loot as many shinies as possible. I said I was trying to go up. I, uh, that was, that was the reverse of up. Spears are OP. Alexander the Great put him to the next level. He said he wanted long ass spears. And he made an army armed with phalanx. Bro, phalanx was my nickname in college. How did you know? No, no, no. Four and a half meters, dude. Yeah, four and a half meters. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I don't want to give you guys the details, but, uh, yeah. Brenda, leave me alone. Yeah, Brenda saw my, my pistol gun. Now they will not leave me alone anymore. <laughs> I got a micro on my pistol gun, dude. Both of the ladies wanted a moment. I had to... <laughs> this weapon is insane. Oh, there's a... There's a... Okay, I see. There you go. There's a ladder over here. Thor, I've got a new weapon. What do you think of it? I need your personal opinion. I'm gonna use it on this guy. You ready? Okay, okay. Here we go, here we go. Buddy, come over here. Okay, I gotta be a little closer. Here we go. It's a great design. It comes in very handy. For some reason, it cracks me up a lot, guys. I think it's very funny. But maybe I have the humor of a 12-year-old. I am not saying I do not. What did you just come back to? I've got a new weapon memory, look! It's great! Nice, right? It's a good weapon. Really powerful. It's unironically very good. Look, I can basically prepare it right over here. I will just start ratata. Ah, dude, you ruined it. Okay, I'll do it over here. I just want to start ratata time. Yo, buddy, come over here. I want to show the stream something. Okay, I basically just ratata. Okay, fine. No, not again, not again, not again. Roll, roll, roll. What? I'm a gamer, dude. Brenda, calm down. Wait, am I still in range of the ball? I think I may have been. I don't know how I just did this differently than... Doesn't matter. I'm here. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Hey, buddy. That was not even close. Roll! Oh. Hey, not dead, not dead. Oh, hey, what's up? I actually meant to do this. Um, well, not all of it. Only part of it was what I meant to do. That was actually, uh, yeah, not entirely my intention, but my intention was good, okay? And oftentimes intention is the most important thing, Chad. My mom always told me that participation was more important than winning. And I strongly disagreed with her when I was a child. I still strongly disagree with her. Grandma! Trust, 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 trust. Trust, trust, trust. Ah, okay, fine. <laughs> it's a bit of a gimmicky weapon. This is like the cannon rush of the game. I kind of like it. 
What the heck is this? <laughs> this weapon's so stupid. No! I don't want to hug! He hugged me! Whoa, whoa, buddy! What the heck did you just do, mate? I'm gonna run away. I don't like hugging. Okay. Come over here! Oh no. Ow! Dude, this is why I don't trust children. No! I don't want to hug! Does my shield stop your hug? I don't think it does. No. What's going on, Darcis? The first thing you heard as you joined the stream is this is why I don't trust children. Good. You know, uh, if it's possible for me to teleport my SCV. Can I, can I SCV holding a canister? Go in a bunker? I want to see if it's possible. Oh, I need more money. You can create a chain. You guys know that? You can teleport. You can teleport uh, units in StarCraft 2. It's just very expensive and very APM intensive, but... Oh, I have to go down up a... Okay, I have to go up a ramp. We can do the second part of it. This is actually a cool trick. I just have to wait until everything is built. I haven't done this in years, though, so bear with me. I want to see if it works. Oh, God. Okay. No, gamer, you were supposed to be teleported. I just want to see if you can go into a bunker, though. That's kind of important. Can you go into a bunker? I can't! Ah, yikes. Well, that defeats the whole purpose. Anyways. I'll teleport one of the other ones. Yeah, you go, you go hang out over here. Okay, teleport. You go over there, you go over there, you go over there, you go over there. You go over there. Why did you not finish it? Okay. I don't remember exactly the way you do this. But basically what you can do is force this one to unload into that bunker. Then this one unloads in that bunker. That one unloads in that bunker. And you can create a chain. Well, assuming you don't lose the bunker. It's kind of an important part. Okay, let's see. So I think what you do is create a hotkey for every single one of the bunkers. And then you hold down the unload button. Yes! It still works! Okay, look, 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 look. Everybody go in this bunker. It's actually super cool. Yeah. You never have a practical use for this, right? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Sick, right? Okay, I'm gonna do it one more time. Can you do a loop? I think so, yeah. You have to get the timing right, though. Here we go. Every bunker is rallied on top of every other bunker. <laughs> Starcraft 2 teleportation. Terrans have mass recoil. It's pretty cool. Look, you see casually ex or casually explained strongman video? Did I? I don't know. This video is sponsored by Incogni. The beauty of strongman is in its purity. You can have a sport like basketball or baseball and think to I did a little bit of strongman training once upon a time, guys. Mostly because I realized I could never be the biggest guy at the gym at all. Without using pro, you know, some 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 enhanced protein powders. Let's let's call it that. Yeah, um, I I did a little bit of strong strong maintaining, and then at some point my uh, my knee started hurting, and like shit got a little bit messy. But self, yeah. But in the end, what's the point to entertain to profit? Is the ball jumping through hoops? So am I. But wait, so this is a video from three days ago? I have not seen this yet. No, let's watch it. Let's watch it. This video is sponsored by Incogni. The beauty of strongman is in its purity. You can have a sport like basketball or baseball and think to yourself, yeah, but in the end, what's the point? To entertain, to profit? Is the ball jumping through hoops? So am I. 
But in Strongman, the whole idea is crystal clear. I want to be the strongest person to ever exist. You might argue that Tyson in his prime could beat Ali, or that LeBron would have beaten Mike in 1v1, or you think that you have to judge a competitor against the competition of the time. The good news is that in Strongman, there's no argument. How big of a rock did your favorite guy lift? Yeah, well, my favorite guy lifted a bigger one, case closed. A problem with other sports is that a lot of them require a lot of skill, but people won't know unless they see you do it. You can be the best skater in the world, but unless you're at the skate park or thrift shop, no one's going to have any idea. But if you're 6 foot 9, 400 pounds, and cause the plane to list to one side... <laughs> is that half Thor? Is he just trying to get into an economy seat? God, point of view, you're 6, 9, and 400 pounds and book the middle seat? Oh, no. On takeoff, people are going to say, Hey, is, it, is, that, is that half Thor Bjornsson? And your lifetime of struggle will have been worth it for that moment of validation. Even the names of the world's strongest men sound powerful. Half yeah. Thor Bjornsson, Zajuna Saviskas, Alexei Novikov, Magnus Vermagnusson, Martins Lysis, Mateus Kielikowski, and of course, Brian which I pronounce perfectly on account of my English language abilities. The great thing about Strongman is you don't even need a reference point to understand how good these athletes are. <laughs> Where does he even find these photos? Most bodybuilders are pretty short. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a fact. A lot of the guys are pretty short. Not all of them. It's not necessarily the case. Pretty much all of the Strongmen are huge. Yeah, these guys are like 210, incredibly heavy, incredibly strong. Yeah. About strongman is you don't even need a reference point to understand how good these athletes are. Every guy watching MMA or boxing always thinks they could land a punch or two on Floyd Mayweather, or maybe even knock him out with their lucky haymaker. But when you watch strongman, True. you have to say, admittedly, I probably couldn't do that one, <laughs> as you nervously glance at your wife to make sure she's not leaving you. Strongman competitions have their roots in many historical tests of strength, from Scottish Highland Games to feats of strength by circus strongmen, and even going back to ancient Greek mythology when Sisyphus was punished by Zeus to endlessly push a boulder up a hill, only to watch it roll back down as he reached the top. The story goes that every morning he would wake up, inhale two scoops of creatine, huff some ammonia, watch a Larry Wheels video, and get ready to smash a new PR, bringing joy and meaning to his otherwise tedious and wasteful life. Similarly, one of the hallmarks of Strongman are the Atlas Stones, named after the Greek titan Atlas, who is often depicted holding up the heavens and earth on his shoulders. While we now know it's actually just turtles all the way down, at the time the concept was quite inspirational. The 80s were when Strongman first became popular as an actual sport, creating legends like Bill Kazmaier, John Paul Sigmerson, and a host of iconic Strongman that caused many to consider this the first golden age of the sport. Prior to this, Strongman featured a ragtag group of strength sports athletes competing on the side <laughs> of their What are they doing? Games. They're bending the a bar? The world's strongest man organizer still thought it would be a good idea that instead of using weights, they put a couple girls in cages, attach them to a bar, and have an event called the Girl Lift. While culture has moved on since then, it's only with hindsight we're now able to realize how fucked up it was to ask a girl what she weighs. During the 80s, organizers, realizing that women were real people and not physical objects whose only purpose was to be lifted for as many repetitions as possible, tried instead to objectify the men, ensuring everyone had the shortest shorts possible, and for a brief period introduced sumo into strongman, where the legendary strongman Bill Kazmaier basically scared his opponents into giving up. While events like sumo were quickly thrown out because even though it provided the much needed boost to strongman's sex appeal, it was simultaneously when Mr. Olympia had fully transitioned from posing trunks to posing thongs, canceling <laughs> yeah. the extra viewership. Yeah, they did make that change at some point, huh? Yeah, no, for some reason they, uh, they decided to shorten, yeah. In creating one of the most I met Casu Explained, by the way. He went to a StarCraft tournament one day. I don't know if... Um, like, he used to stream a lot of StarCraft 2, too. I don't know if you guys remember this. I don't, I don't think he streams much anymore these days, but... He, uh... He actually came to a Home Story Cup 20, is what it was. In... Berlin. Really fun. Popular hobbies for straight men ever since. Bill Kazmaier was the man who dominated strongmen in the early 80s. He won World's Strongest Man in 1980, 81, 82, and then the organizers banned him from participating for essentially being too good. Well, I'm suspicious what? of that narrative because it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to run with it because it upholds my fantasy. He was athletic, an elite power lifter, and all around built for strongmen. One of the greats of strongmen in the 80s and a rival to Bill Kazmaier was John Paul Sigmerson, who won World's Strongest Man four times and was famous for doing a 1,005 pound axle deadlift and exclaiming, there's no reason to be alive if you can't do deadlifts. 
He then died later doing deadlifts. Have their roots in many <laughs> rules around international. <laughs> no. Sorry, no I clicked the bar for accident. Did he actually? <laughs> Most of That's so messed up. Comment. Aortic rupture? What? He did a deadlift so heavy, his aorta ruptured? That thing's huge, man. That is one hell of a way to go. I understand blood can only pressure so much, but you'd imagine you'd pass out before fucking rupturing your aorta. That's insane. You will regret it in Valhalla. Nevertheless, despite great competition in the 80s, Strongman as a sport in and of itself spent most of this decade and the next lost in an identity crisis trying to figure out what kind of sport it was and what really made a man strong. Was it his mind? Was it his heart? Or was it being able to lift a 345 pound tree trunk above your head? The no one. one truly knew for some reason and Strongman fell into a competitive lull. Other than having arm wrestling that ended how every popular arm wrestling clip usually does, the 90s were an overall boring time for strongman, as more important things were taking up people's time. The arm wrestling guys are insane though. Like there are so many videos of the arm wrestling dudes going up against, you know, the world's strongest men or like big ass bodybuilders. Those guys are insanely powerful. Don't, don't, don't arm wrestle one of those guys seriously. They will snap your arm in half. Attention and money. I was being born without my permission. The internet was being called a fad by Nobel Prize winning economists. Capital investment was pouring into children's cartoons, serial advertisements, and anything to sell mass manufactured products to Western millennials with an exorbitant markup. While all of these pieces of plastic were fucking awesome, it wasn't the time or place to lift heavy things. But the time, was soon to come. In the early 2000s, Strongman was still somewhat dormant, but re-emerging from hibernation, it's popular where these the only days, person man. winning things because of rules around international Was that guy's name literally Phil Fister? That was a good name. ...and lack of anyone really being all that good, was Marius Pujanowski, who admittedly was the first Strongman ever who wasn't quite as statically strong, but was really fast and had great endurance on account of being jacked out of his goddamn mind. While he is one of the most athletic and decorated strongmen in history, popularized the sport immensely because everyone thought, well, why, why isn't he really fat? And maybe one of the best strongmen ever, pound for pound, I will reiterate that the spirit of strongmen, where our hearts and souls have always been, is who can lift the biggest rock. And he... <laughs> this is admittedly what I think of when I think of strongman competitions. Yeah, that... <laughs> For some reason, it looks like there's a potato that he's lifting and his face kind of turned into one as well. That is an amazing photo. <laughs> did not usually. That's a really large potato, man. Lift the biggest rock. And so in the eyes of many observers of the sport, we all thought, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose him as the best strongman ever. But, but this is, of course, how I would look if I, if I, if I tried strongman. True. With True. the popularization of World's Strongest Man and a shift in marketing due to internet popularity, many event changes occurred, shifting from somewhat heavy things done quickly to extremely heavy things done some of the time. And after 2008, when everyone's leveraged CLOs went tits up, it was obvious to most men that if you couldn't get rich, you might as well get strong. And we had a well-rounded and dynamic international competition where Zadrunas Saviskas established himself as arguably the greatest strongman of all time. He was immensely statically strong, known particularly for his overhead press, but more importantly... 502 pound overhead press? Dude, that's insane. That's like, what, 230 kilo-ish? That's like almost three of me. On just your shoulders? That's, that's actually insane though. Ultimately cemented an image in our collective brain cells of what a strong man looks like. A regular tall fat guy, but with a weightlifting belt. As Big Z moved towards retirement in the mid-2010s, he ushered in the peak of what has been called the era of the Giants, with the likes of Brian Shaw and Half Thor Bjornsson, 6'8 and 6'9 respectively. This guy plays the mountain in Game of Thrones. 
simply became the focus of the sport, along with Eddie Hall, who is instead about six foot eight in circumference. Most strongmen historically have been about six foot three, barely qualifying them for Tinder. And the challenge of these new height differentials meant that one of the most important factors in any strongman competition would be what the events were going to be. Because generally speaking, any event where you needed to move something along the Y axis, like deadlift or overhead press, would favor hydraulic refrigerators like Eddie Hall. While events that required weight, leverage, or grip advantages like the Fingles Fingers, Truck Pull, or the Keg Toss would favor the even bigger boys. The Giants era was really a new golden Eddie Hall is massive too, though. Like, that guy is not short. How tall is Eddie Hall? That guy is, like, over two meters tall, too. If these new human blueprints were going to destroy all previously known limits. And while Brian Shaw dominated for several years through overall well-roundedness, near the end of this era, it ultimately became more pursuit of breaking world records in specific categories. Eddie only won World's Strongest Man once, then said, fuck this, I'm going to be the first person ever to deadlift 1,100 pounds. Half he did. Thor also yeah. won World's Strongest Man once, then said, I'm the guy who launched Pedro Pascal's career, I'm gonna lift this tree, then I'm gonna deadlift exactly one kilo more than Eddie. This annoyed Eddie, and they of course settled the dispute the only way that makes sense. Taking the obvious next step, all three of them are now YouTubers. Since the end of their rivalry in the late 2010s, we began the modern era of strongman, which seems to be the age of specialization. While everyone wants the title of world's strongest man, especially me, focusing on individual records is much more practical. Guys like Tom Staltman, who is himself... Yeah, yeah. Six this, is, this is the path I took as well, yeah. I went from uh, strongman, Hollywood superstar, settling it with a boxing match, and then eventually I started making videos back in 2008. But eight has I'm mastered a retired the art of man. lifting the biggest rock over a bar. I was the strongest 12 year old. Is Kielikowski has mastered the art of lifting the biggest rock onto your shoulder, and Eddie Hall has mastered lifting the biggest rock for the most ad revenue. Guys like Martin Blisis <laughs> seems to just be doing his own thing. Despite there still being healthy competition, the biggest debate in strongman is the direction the sport is going in. While the last World's Strongest Man was won by my fellow Canadian and time traveler Mitchell Hooper, event selection still is the determining. <laughs> oh, what? Are these old strong people? Strong men? This this is the current guy? That is a little bit suspicious, yeah. Time traveler to say the least. Factor in most strongman contests. I think that a good way to address biased event selection is create events where the weight and what you're supposed to do with it is standardized, but the shape of the weight is not revealed until the day of the event. This allows athletes to prepare for the event, but not specialize specifically for the task. For example, you could have the small rock, the big rock, medium rock for reps, rock toss, rock pull. Really, the options are endless. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Now, while you may not be able to be a strong man, you might be interested okay, in fine. being a safe man with today's sponsor, Incogni. Okay, fine. I don't get many calls, nor would I answer them if I did. My voicemail is almost entirely spam, whether it's telemarketers, robocalls, my dad, or scammers. Even when I kindly request they stop calling me, they still manage to get my email somehow. This is because data brokers collect your information and hold them in a commercial database, which is not only vulnerable to a breach, but they can sell that data to other businesses and it might fall in the hands of some sketchy people. This isn't just your phone number and email, but can include your address, social insurance number, and more. Incogni works by requesting on your behalf the removal of your personal data directly from data brokers, and then will automatically continue to follow up and make further communication sick. until the request is successful. The thing that I was genuinely impressed by is the entire process took me literally 60 seconds. The thing you is... Make an account, check out a plan, and then I thought... Okay, just because it's illegal in the EU doesn't mean that it doesn't it help, though. 278 requests initiated. And then after thinking for a second, I was like, oh yeah, right, that makes sense. Because there are so many commercial databases, even requesting removal manually might take years. But doing it repeatedly to catch newly collected data is practically impossible. Very cool, guys. You can use uh, probably, yeah, yeah, you can get 60% off. There you go. Pretty sick. <sighs> I always like casually explained videos. They're pretty fun. He's got great videos, guys. Is she into you? Is this, it might be, this is only two and a half minutes. Let's have a look. I know a lot of guys have trouble picking up on the signs of whether or not a girl is into them. So today I want to do a little quiz so you can see if she actually does like you or even just how good you are at recognizing signals that you might be getting. Okay, chat, let's do this together. We can figure it out. Let's say you're in a bar and you look across the length of the counter and you see a cute girl who glances at you briefly, does a quick hair flip and then turns back to her friends. Is she into you? Uh, Absolutely not. No. She probably just looked my direction on accident.
B or C. I'm going to go with C. Uh, eye contact is obviously a good sign, but you really can't tell from this example. She could just be adjusting her hair, and maybe she was looking at someone behind you. So, let's say you're at the office and your cute co-worker is waiting behind you to make some copies of whatever people make copies of, and she says, Wow, do you think you could go any slower? And then playfully punches your arm. Is she into you? Uh, Absolutely not. No, she's upset. She wants to use the printer as well, and I am just slowing down her day. Uh, honestly, hard to say, either B or C. Her name is Natalie Dormer. That's irrelevant. Again, you can't really tell from this example either. She might like you, but she might just be giggling and punching your arm as a sarcastic middle school throwback. So, well, she, yeah, she's a co-worker. Yeah. But really no way to tell. Okay, so let's say you're at the gym on the elliptical for some reason, and Cutie McBooty comes in and gets on the exercise bike in front of you. Uh, and then after five minutes, she looks back and says... Wow, I'm so sweaty already. If only there were a way to get the same workout at home writing something else. And then gives you a wink. She into you. Yes. No, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I think that one's a little hard to say, honestly. Yeah, I think it's option C for sure. I, I honestly can't tell. Yeah. Still can't tell with that one. Um, exercise equipment is pretty expensive, and maybe she lives in a small apartment and just doesn't have space. So maybe you find a good deal on rowing machine somewhere. You can show her the flyer. Okay, so let's say you meet up with a friend that you've had coffee and drinks with a couple times, and she says, I had a lot of fun on the last few dates we went on. That's a good sign because she thought those hangouts were actually dates. So suppose then she says, How would you like to come back to my place and watch Netflix tonight? That's another good sign. Uh, it's usually a pretty good indicator when a girl invites you to do something, Probably not, especially not. at her place. So then let's say later at her house, you guys are watching Wally -E or something like that, and she says, I'm getting pretty bored. Why don't you come upstairs with me? That's another great sign. She probably has something pretty interesting to do upstairs if it's better than watching Wally. -E. So then after you go up there, all of a sudden she pushes you onto her bed, dims the lights, rips off her clothes, and you start having sex. Whoa! Is she into you? No! Absolutely not. What do you mean? I can't tell. Yeah, again, you really can't be too sure. It's pretty dark in the room, so she can't really see you properly. Maybe she's from Canada and was just being polite. Anyway, best bet is to just keep your wits about you and continue to look for signs. That's a very helpful video. Yeah. Great video. Great video. Yeah. I hope that helps, guys. Time to swell my pee organ. Mm, please don't ever say anything again in the chat, Brian. <laughs> I can't believe I read that out loud, honestly. Sometimes I need to pre-read what you guys write, rather than <laughs> me just... <laughs> God, it looked pretty innocent. <laughs> when it started with the verb swelling, I should have known better. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the... I just walked next to it. I just walked off the beam. I'm a gamer. An epic gamer. That was impressively bad. Gonna have to run all the way back. Gravity affects me in real life too. Yeah. I blame that son of a bitch, Newton, for inventing it. Bit of a dick move. I like your cat ears, Loka. Thanks, man. Newton ruined it. Yeah, we used to be able to fly. That's how we built the pyramids. And landed on the moon. And then Newton came along. Just because he liked apples or something. Didn't he also invent algebra? What a dick. I hated that in school. Newton faked the moon landing. Absolutely. <coughs> Wasn't it Newton who came up with algebra during a pandemic? Oh, calculus is what it is. Fair. Didn't he invent math during a pandemic? This guy was a bit of a chad. Newton. He's like, I'm bored. You know what I can do? Calculate pi. There's like a dozen guys that literally died trying to calculate a circle. That's their whole life's work. <laughs> Don't die! <gasps> what? Well, that was weird. Where am I going? Oh god, I don't know where my souls are gonna be now. Why calculate pie when you could eat it? That's a very good point. Maybe he sold his soul to the apple? The Tim Apple? Tim Cook? 
Newton sold his soul to Apple? And then he invented gravity, so now we all use phones? Dude, I really think we're onto something here. He could have invented apple pie. He could have. Yeah. But he didn't. This is a conspiracy theory that I haven't heard of before. Newton selling his soul to Tim Apple. And when you think about it, right? He calculated pie, and he had an apple fall on his head. Now, what's the most popular form of pie, Chet? Apple pie. It was staring us in the face this entire time. Pumpkin? No, 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 no. This train station has no business being this good. Even small towns are great here. I watched a little bit of this. All right, let's watch a small little part of this, guys. I think I'm gonna mute the game, though. I don't want to watch the full 18 minutes of this, because it's kind of long, but... Sound like a broken record here. We've lived in the Netherlands for five years now, and during that time, we've been to many different cities. This is very Dutch. This, this immediately looks very Dutch. These and towns. Now, obviously, I talk about Amsterdam a lot on this channel, because that's the city I live in, but I routinely show clips from other places that I've been to in the country. These cars. These cars are very popular now in the cities. There's another one right over there. From what I understand, they look hilarious to people. Yeah, outside of the Netherlands. The way people use these things is they park them generally sideways. No, those are not senior cars. From what I understand, many of them don't... I don't know exactly how this works, but they, they, they go so slow that they don't technically need like a license plate or something. I'm not exactly sure. They're pretty expensive too. They're like 15,000. They're like, you know, they're like cars level of expensive. You can you can buy a, a decent car for, for, for that level of money. Uh, but people don't take them outside of the city. Yeah, they're like scooters with four wheels, basically. Tree. So that oh. solves the weather problem. A lot of the time, I didn't go to these places specifically. They're, they're, it's a closed up electrical bike. Yeah. ...to film them. They were just some of the places I had to go <laughs> because I was going to an appointment or visiting friends or just living my life. And while I grabbed a few video clips here and there, I never collected enough footage to make a complete video about any of these places, especially in the early days. But a lot of these places are really interesting, and I think you'll find them so interesting. So this, this is basically any road in the Netherlands. This is like 95% of places you go inside of towns will have a... Uh, so this is over here would be like for the cars, and this would be for bicycles. So all of the, or, or all of the red-ish paths are dedicated to bicycles. Two, because one of the things that really honestly just blew me away after moving to the Netherlands is just how good things are pretty much everywhere. I've never lived outside the Netherlands, so I, I take a lot of it for granted. When we got to the Netherlands, we tried to get out of the city as much as possible to get to know our new country. Before I had a YouTube channel, I used to take photos or videos of things I found interesting, and it's really funny to look back on a lot of what so, I thought- So, I, I mean, I talked about it recently, right? But imagine having your Ford F-150 going down this road. It just, <laughs> it doesn't work. It, it doesn't, you can't. <laughs> what was worth filming. Most of these videos are too short as they were never meant to be posted to YouTube, so you'll have to excuse me if I have to loop some of them. So anyway, let's begin. We have visited the city of Harlem several times, both before moving to the Netherlands and after, as it's an easy trip from Amsterdam by train. Visiting Harlem for the first time Harlem was awesome. a really eye-opening experience for yeah. me, as it was the first time I realized that even a city of about 160,000 people could be really active and lively, and I talked about that in the very That's first video on this channel. My hometown has over three times the population, and you'd need a 50-car pileup to see this many people outside of their cars at one time. This is entirely because of the design of Harlem and its pedestrianized city center. I took our kids to Leiden to visit the Natural History Museum again. Hey, that's where I went a couple of weeks ago. Trivially easy to access by train and a short walk. I've never been. It's awesome. It's this is really literally nice. the only video I took of Leiden. This crosswalk. This amazed me because it was such a safe crossing where the street was narrowed with this big pedestrian island. Oh. I like I like how he says it's such a safe crossing as that guy on the on the moped almost got hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's look at the guy on the moped again. I feel like he almost died. This amazed there he goes. me because it was such a safe crossing. Where Whoop. the street was narrow <laughs> okay, with this big bad. pedestrian island. Oh, okay. I was clearly easily impressed in those early days, but seriously, this would not exist in any city this size in Canada, and that's really sad, right? 
I did a similar thing in the town of Harlingen, where the only video I took was this one. Again, of a safe crosswalk. In this case... <laughs> I love that these guys out there taking videos of crosswalks. That's so funny to me. Like, I never think about crosswalks. No. Anyways, we don't have any of that going in my city. I watched the, the one that I quite liked, actually. It was this one. This train station has no business being this good. Apparently, they redid an entire train station. In way too many countries with terrible public transport. He shows at some point what it used to be like and how they redid it. Okay, well, I guess we'll start over here. This station is so ridiculously nice. The first time I came here, I just wandered around going, Wow! Look at this! And this! And that over there! Oh, wow! This country never ceases to amaze me. But okay, okay. I'll get into all these great things in a minute. Just let me give you some context first. This is Zeist, with a population of about 65,000 people. His, his pronunciation is pretty good. He, he, he tries really hard to pronounce A. I know it sounds almost identical, but he, he's, yeah, he's getting better. If you watch some of his first videos... And this is Drieberge, a town of about 19,000 people. And this is the Drieberge Zeist train station, located between the two of them. There's something beautiful about hearing native English speakers pronounce Dutch names. I really like it. It sounds really cute. Drieberge Zeist. That's, that's how it would be pronounced, but... <laughs> There's been a train station in this location since the mid-1800s, but it was a relatively unremarkable station in the middle of nowhere. It was just a stop on the way to somewhere else. This station didn't know where it was. First it was just called Drieberge, uh, then Zeist Drieberge, uh, then back to Drieberge, and finally to its current name of Drieberge Zeist. The station became famous in the 1950s as the coffee station, where a whole family would come out to sell coffee to the entire train at once, aiming to serve everyone before the train left again. Passagiers die geregeld op deze lijn reizen weten al welke ontvangst hun te wachten staat. De koffiefamilie heeft er een eigen systeem voor. Ze regelt het zo dat ze de hele trein in één keer kan bedienen. And then apparently everyone would just chuck their coffee cups out the window, <laughs> yeah. uh, giving a job to this guy who had to go along the tracks to yeah, clean them all up. Yeah, creating jobs! I can confidently say that I have never seen anyone throw their garbage out of a train here, but I was also never offered any coffee on the platform either. Nowadays, Drieberge Zeist should be known as the best small train station in the Netherlands because I'm pretty sure it is. The station was newly renovated and opened in May of 2020, but it kind of flew under everyone's radar because of the COVID lockdowns. <laughs> Nobody cares that much about train stations in the Netherlands. That's kind of the thing. It doesn't fly under people's radars, but people don't talk about train stations. It's not like we go to like a birthday party in the Netherlands and talk about train stations. There's not well, there's no way. The previous station layout here was pretty bad. There was a busy level crossing right on the main road into town. And get this. This level crossing was active for 20 minutes out of every hour, <laughs> which is wild. You can hear the level crossing sound constantly going off in this video of the old station. By the way, thanks to Cab View Holland for being clairvoyant enough to film the whole station right before construction started and for letting me use his video. He puts out lots of videos that show a train driver's view of the Netherlands, yeah, and they're really interesting, especially if you're a fan of railways. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. The old level crossing situation was a pain for drivers, of course, but there were also plans to send 11 trains per hour per direction through this area, and there's no way they could get that kind of volume through a level crossing. Now, the station is at ground level across a 140 meter span, and the area under was dug out to fit everything else. For example, the road now goes under the station, which makes the whole area significantly safer and more efficient for everyone. This station is very well serviced by trains. Six trains per hour per direction stop here, despite the combined population of the region being <laughs> under 100,000 people. <laughs> and there are now four tracks here as well, so express trains can pass stopping trains. That's a German train! I know Deutsche! The construction of the new Drieberge Zeiss station was crazy. They built I guess that's kind of the thing about the Netherlands, right? Like, there's a lot of money available for infrastructure projects like this. Like, I don't know how much it would cost, 
to redo all of this, to lift the entire train station, to reroute all trains in the meantime, all other traffic, make sure that there's like an underground parking for, for bicycles. There's an area as well for like buses and everything. This, this must cost an absurd amount of money. And I guess organizing it is a really large amount of work. Yeah, about $2,000 in city skylines. At least $10, yeah. Temporary Where does the money come from? Yeah, yeah, tulips. We sell tulips to uh, other countries, and uh, that's that's where it comes from. Station ...and kept it open to trains almost the entire time. The longest downtime was a 16-day period where 750 people worked in shifts 24 hours a day so that two and a half months of work could be compressed into about two weeks. Nice. The planning that was needed to pull this off must have been epic. Now, there are some really skilled people there somewhere. As I mentioned, Dreberge Station is not really in... I don't know, I, I guess those are... What, what would be the job description for people that design this sort of... I have no idea, but there are some really skilled people that work on this sort of stuff in the Netherlands, for sure. Berge or Zeist, it's in an area in the middle, and surrounded by a lot of forest. Just a city and planner? This yeah, very like, lovely a, park like a too. civil engineer, I guess? This is not exactly yeah. an ideal location for a train station, which is why this station needs to have very good connections to the outside world. So this redesign makes Drieberge Zeist much more than just a local train station. It's now a transportation hub for the whole region. Of course, since this is the Netherlands, there's a beautiful and functional bicycle parking garage. This garage holds around 3,000 bicycles. Look at how open, bright, and spacious this is. Bicycle despite garage, being baby! Under a train station. Oh, uh, just ignore the glare off the glass. I couldn't get a better angle of this, okay? Trust me, it's awesome. They built a beautiful one From in Amsterdam, actually. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and see if I can find it. This bicycle stable, you can also pick up the Ove Feet's rental bicycles, including these electric models. These are really handy in a location like this, where the train station is not in the center of the city, so longer distances may be required to get to and from the station by bicycle. And here's the best part of this garage. There's an elevator that literally... Yeah. So they have this area in, in Amsterdam, where it's a completely built... This is under the water. So there's a... Um, like a... what do you call it? Like a thing going through the canals, right? Um, that ultimately leads to the North Sea, and this is built underwater. So this is just for bicycle parking, which is kind of wild. So you can basically, like, the whole idea is to get rid of cars in the city and to allow people to take bicycles instead. So most of the bicycle parking is free. So these are, like, double layered. So you can basically park up top and then at the bottom, too. And you can take these escalators to take your bicycle up and out. Um, this is, like, this is the central station. This is the central station in Amsterdam. So this is, like, a proper project that took a very long time. Yeah, so this is where all of those tour boats, you know, like whenever you take like a like a boat tour in the Netherlands, this is usually where most of them start. So the idea is that people can take the bike instead, and most of them you can like you can rent the bicycle for for cheap as well. It is actually very cool. Yeah, they 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 really did do a pretty sick job. Really takes you from the bottom of the bicycle parking garage right up to platform level. <laughs> this is so great, man. This so wait, this is an elevator? Oh yeah, it's an elevator taking the bicycle up to and from the station by bicycle. And here's the best part of this garage. There's an elevator that literally takes you from the bottom of the bicycle parking garage right up to platform level. <laughs> this is so great. Man, this country, I just... <laughs> I love it here. Is it that cool? I don't know. I also love what they did with the historical elements on the platform. You can see how they took the old platform roof refurbished it and elegantly integrated it into the new roof for the larger platform. Huh. It's a really nice attention to detail. The main entrance to the bicycle parking garage is right off this nice bicycle path that runs under the station. There's no road along this side of the station, so this is a really safe and pleasant place to cycle. Despite being underneath a train station, this place is very open and inviting, which is important for social safety. I love that this is always taken into consideration when the Dutch design infrastructure. This area under the tracks is very open and well lit, and the walls are curved to avoid the dingy tunnel feeling that you get from many other underpasses. There are multiple sets of stairs here, as well as an elevator to get up to the platform level. 
Underneath the stairs are some decorative rocks, as well as the Any Bicycles Parked Here Will Be Removed sign, which is surrounded by parked bicycles, Classic. as is typical in the Netherlands. Classic. There's also a small waiting Any room. Any parked bicycle gets removed. <laughs> There's bicycles there, guaranteed. And they will get removed. But if, you, if you're lucky, they are just not removing the bicycles as you're there. Where yeah. you can sit if the weather is particularly cold and miserable. And there's a restaurant and a cafe. But sorry, folks, it's not the 1950s anymore. You got to get your own damn coffee. You can still get free water from the bottle refill station, though. It's interesting to note that there are no fare gates at this station, which really surprised me because you see them at most stations in the Netherlands. Here, there's just a few ticket machines and a handful of places <laughs> to tap your to old chip card or credit card to pay for a ticket. The north side of the station connects very... So the trains are pretty pricey in the Netherlands, though. This has been an issue, especially as of late. There's been a lot of discussion about that. Because they're trying to encourage train usage and public transport in general. But then it's f***ing expensive. It can usually be literally cheaper to take the car. So a lot of people are just not bothering. But there's a lot of companies that have like... So for example, this guy had like a business card when he checked in. So it's a lot of uh, businesses that will pay for public transport use. And yeah, there's just a few ticket a lot machines of and a handful of places to tap your OVA chip card or credit card to pay for a ticket. The north side of the station connects very nicely to this bus station where buses regularly come and go, connecting travelers to the surrounding region. I was surprised just how many buses come through this area and how many boarding areas there are too. That's one ugly How many, bus. you may ask? They've recently scaled down the size of buses of like the ones that don't get a lot of traffic, that don't have a lot of passengers. These new buses they use, they kind of just look like scaled up minivans or something. There are J, J bus platforms. <laughs> I also enjoyed how this office building had its main entrance off the bicycle path and across from the bus station, instead of having it on the other side of a parking lot, like is so common in other cities. In fact, this whole bus station is immediately accessible from the train station without needing to cross any roads or parking lots. I love how well the Netherlands designs their train stations. So yeah, it's cool. It's cool for sure. Only problem is that it's very expensive for casual trips. A lot of students will get like this thing that gives them either like a big discount or they can travel for free. But if you're not on any sort of discount, you don't get any employer benefits or whatever, um, taking the train is not really something you would do very frequently. Nice. What's up, Sven? Hello, hello. Thank you very much for the 69 months. Very nice. Yeah, it's all a little bit funky. But overall, public transport in the Netherlands is pretty great. Speaking of mistakes, Today for the first time ever, my wife apologized. She said she is sorry she ever married me. Lol. Oof. Yikes. Hope that was a joke. Thank you for the three dollars. That may be a life update. Yeah, it could be. I did see the aftermath of the Qatar race. Yeah. The Qatar race seems like a horrible idea. I mean, normally Qatar is a lovely place for sports, of course. <laughs> no, no drama, no controversy whatsoever. One of the greatest sports locations in the world. But yeah, the Formula One race there in uh, early October did not seem like a great idea. Basically, um... yo, Tassathur. Happy birthday, Loco. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Finally, somebody remembered. Thank you for the 53 months. Tier three resub. Hell yeah. Appreciate you. One of the guys, I actually got a lot of respect for him. Um, he's uh, pretty much the worst driver on the grid. But Sergeant, Logan Sergeant, basically decided, yo guys, I'm done. Because if I continue driving, I'm going to faint. And apparently, I think it was, was it Alba? Who reported, like it was so hot during that race, that he reported he puked for like two laps straight into his helmet. And then he continued driving out the race because obviously he, you know, felt like he needed to. That's kind of gross. That's kind of messed up. Stroll reported that apparently he basically passed out every single time in a turn. Ever since like lap 18. And I think they had to drive like 57 laps or something like that. Because it was too hot. So these guys are going like 300 kilometers an hour plus like 250 miles or something. These guys are going incredibly fast through quarters. Pulling an insane amount of G. And 
yeah, they uh, are apparently all lightheaded, basically passed out. All kinds of messed up stuff. It's all very concerning, yes, but money, that's true. So they made it a night race. From what I understand, back in 2021, they did a race over there too, but they did it in December. Or at least later on into the season. Even though it was like, you know, late in the evening, it was still way too hot to properly do a race there. Apparently ticket sales weren't even that good. No, apparently ticket sales was like lowest attendance of any Formula One race this year so far. The car costs like $10 million and still no AC. I think they're a little more than that, does it there? No AC though. But yeah, I actually felt bad for the guys. Like if you look at photos and whatnot of them, like after the race, it, it was properly messed up. Like if there's a little bit of rain on the road, on the, on the track, right? The uh, FIA, like the, the, the people in charge of the race, they basically shut everything down and they're like trying to, you know. And these guys are literally passing out in, to in, in corners and they are still uh, not doing well. Yeah, Lance Stroll said that everything was blurry in the last 25 to 30 laps and that he was basically passing out in all the high speed corners. That's kind of crazy, man. Like two of the guys could not get out of their car properly at the end of the race. So they had to be like helped out of their cars because they just couldn't stand up anymore. Completely dehydrated, just crazy stuff. Apparently the temperature in the cockpit was like 50 plus degrees Celsius for like an hour and a half while pulling all the G-forces and kind of crazy. So I hope they, uh, yeah, maybe come back in Qatar uh, at the end of the season or something, but Nah, then October. Seems like a bad idea. Yeah, apparently some of them fainted in the ambulance or like the, the health center thing afterwards. Kind of nuts, man. Yeah, but obviously, the, like they bring water inside the car. But obviously, if the seat is 50 plus degrees Celsius, the water is also going to heat up. So you're basically just sitting there in a sauna the entire time. No, they're also wearing like full on balaclavas and fireproof suits and the whole thing. Actually kind of nuts. Actually kind of crazy that, you know. This happened the way it did. Like, it could have, like, nobody died, but it could have easily happened. Somebody could have crashed with, like, 300 plus kilometers an hour, fainting in the seat. Just, it could have been an absolute disaster. Like, nothing bad happened. And watching the race, it wasn't particularly obvious that, you know, it was that bad. But looking back at it, I really hope they, uh, they decide to make some changes, because honestly, such a mess. Yeah, these guys are all very fit, right? Like, they're, uh... Yeah, I saw that. You had a couple of guys driving really fast, holding their hands like that on the straight, above the cockpit's edge, just to try and cool down their hands a little bit. So these guys are going, like, 350 kilometers an hour. They're like... <laughs> Insane. Yeah, they're opening their visor, and they get sent in. Because, you know, it's still a desert. Ay, ay, ay. You're like, I'm so hot, I'm gonna open it, and then you have sand in your eyes? It really sounds awful. Yeah, it was fun to watch, but, um... And then so many of the guys also got in trouble because they... They got, like, all kinds of penalties because they drove over the track limits. But when you think about it, these guys are going super fast. Apparently, some of them are not getting proper vision anymore. And then they, they get punished by, like, five seconds after they exceed certain track limits multiple times. Ay 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 ay. Actually insane, man. Yeah, I can't I can't watch that on stream, but yeah, that video of Gabe is a pretty good example. Just throw buckets of ice water? So that's what that's what uh Fernando Alonso asked. Like he reported over the radio that his seat was too hot. And he asked if they could pour water over him at the next pit stop. <laughs> and they couldn't. Apparently there's some sort of safety regulation that doesn't allow them to do that. Uh, but he, he asked if they could like help him out in some way like the commentator one of the commentators i'm forgetting his name right now but a uh he used to drive formula one and he mentioned that apparently he drove a very hot race back in the day and apparently he literally burned his ass to the point where he like had burn marks on his ass and apparently what he did and i thought this was kind of funny is he took a picture of it and then he emailed it to everybody at the factory to let him know that Maybe it's fun to design a car like that, but it's not practical for the driver. Cold heart, yes, that's it. Actually insane though, dude. That's crazy. Like if it's that hot that you literally get burns on your ass after you drive for an hour and a half. Like it's a fun story now, but like that is actually insane. Yeah, it's all weight reductions. It's all weight reductions. 
A lot of those guys are also very skinny, right? Because they, they just, like, yeah, the, the lighter you are, the better it is. Especially, uh, you know, a lot of them come from karting days as well, and in karts, like, especially, the, the, the less weight, the better, because the kart doesn't weigh that much. Obviously, these Formula 1 cars are very heavy, but these guys are strong and skinny. Yeah, they're like... Yeah, most of them are around 70-ish kilos. Some a little heavier, some a little lighter, but... Yeah, I, dude, I saw that. When Logan Sargent stepped out of his car, like, there was literally water coming out, like, somehow outside. It's also, like, I, I don't know how fire safety suits work, but if the fire, like, the, the, the fire prevention suit, whatever, right, those things they wear is completely drenched, there's no way it's gonna work properly anymore either. There's no way. You save on fuel, tires, brakes, and time. Yeah, you, you save on everything. Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing, right? So they, they're not, yeah, they're not gonna do active cooling solutions unless it's mandated by the sport. Like, that could also be a thing that, like, they create a mandate for it, and then suddenly, you know, if the seat temperature may not exceed 40 degrees Celsius or something stupid, like, they, they could come up with solutions for it, but it would have to be mandated by the people that come up with the rules. The teams themselves are not gonna do that sort of stuff. Water-cooled seats? Yeah, there are solutions for it, of course, but... Everybody has to do it or nobody, exactly. These are the absolute worst roads you've ever seen? Really? I saw a great TikTok about this exact thing some time ago. I think I may have already shown this on stream, but I thought it was really funny. YouTubers in 1808 when Beethoven dropped? Beethoven, symphony number five. First reaction, let's get into it. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I already know this is gonna go hard. I'm just trying to mentally prepare myself. You know what I'm saying? Yes! Beethoven, Symphony. This guy has a lot of great videos exactly like this, which I think is really funny. I came across a bunch of these randomly. Oh my god, he's got a lot. LMIO, that was great. Yeah, this guy has a bunch of good stuff. Hold on, let me see if I can find it real quick. My random video that I posted about that roller coaster that I made randomly got 1.4 million video. <laughs> 1.4 million views. Every dude with a podcast. Can I blow your mind real quick? Okay, so the word dinosaur comes from... <laughs> Chris is leaving because we've been fighting about this all day. Go. So the word dinosaur comes from two Greek words, okay? Deinos, which means terrible, and saros, which means lizard, okay? Now, dinosaurs lived hundreds of millions of years ago, apparently. And the Greek language is only 5,000 years old. Let that sink in. So either there were Greek people around 100 million years ago, or, or there were dinosaurs 5,000 years ago. Literally every dude with a podcast. Literally any dude with a podcast is <laughs> like that. That's so funny. There's a lot of dumb podcasts out there, guys. Yeah. YouTubers in 1783 were reacting to Mozart's latest single. Okay, let's go. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was not ready for that. Did y'all hear that? Y'all can't tell me Bach is better. Vivaldi, uh, Handel, Beethoven, all y'all mother Sit down, the king is back. Come on, man. Do you hear that? I can't believe he ain't won a Grammy. That's crazy. Okay, let's go. For some reason, I love that. That's so funny to me. He never considered that the ancient Greeks may have time traveled? I guess that's a good point. Yeah, time travel is not something that he probably came up with. Beethoven just dropped, bro. Yeah, I just saw it. Play it, play it, hurry up. There's some funny shit on TikTok, man. That's so good. <laughs> he don't miss. <laughs> That's so good. The Greeks couldn't have possibly discovered dinosaur remains at any point before other modern cultures discovered them. I don't think it was that serious. The plot thickens. If centaurs aren't real, then how come they filmed them in the Harry Potter movies? 
How could they have filmed them if they don't exist yet? They invented them? Whoa, that's a possibility. Press the button. Okay. Ah. Let's see. Going up the elevator. Oh. <gasps> no. Oh, <laughs> Dude. Hmm. That is so frustrating. I fell off the elevator. Okay, well, I guess we'll find out if Bearman respawns. I don't even know if I'm that far. I feel like I just had to, like, walk very carefully. And there's a load of enemies along the way, but I'm gonna just, yeah, put my five and a half thousand souls on the, on the line. My ergo. Bearman! Oh, Bearman does respawn. I thought you were like a little mini boss mate. I would prefer if you don't get me stuck in a corner, though. I, I, you know, don't want to be a dick about it or whatever. Okay, so we go around over here. He'll stop chasing me, I'm sure. At some point. Maybe I wasn't even that far out. I think I'm just gonna drop down, and then this is the house. Right over here. Yeah. Okay. This place is a bit of a maze, but... I've made my way back. That wasn't actually so bad. It really does feel like a From Software game. It really does. This whole area... Feels just like it. Mate, dying to a random... Low-level enemy would also be very bloodborne -y. Enemy design in this game is also good, dude. Honestly, this game is really sick. How did this game just suddenly appear out of nowhere from a relatively unknown company? <laughs> kind of awesome. No, 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 no! Me. Don't, don't kill me. Wi-Fi connector, man. You don't really like these ty types of games, but yeah, it's definitely not for everybody. I personally love pain. Oh, jeez. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Come on, bro. Uh, okay. I'll continue here tomorrow. It's just some souls. Should I go loot them? I think I should go loot them because I'm never going to find them tomorrow. So much greed. I was trying to heal, guys. I wasn't even being greedy. Oh yeah, there was a chest over here. True. Excuse me, sir. I'm gonna be stuck in an animation for a minute. That is mean. Okay, that's it. That's it. I, I gotta. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. He attacked me right as the animation ended, dude. Kind of rude. Not gonna lie. I am afraid I can't stream tomorrow. But... Hey, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, my controller's not working! No! It's disconnected! How do you fight? How do I fight with mouse and keyboard? This would be an excellent time to... Okay. I guess my batteries have run out? I hope my batteries have run out? I'm using Amazon batteries, chat. I'm gonna call Jeffrey after today's stream if it doesn't work. I'm just saying. Mr. Bezos, listen, buddy, pal. Because he's personally in charge of every single one of these batteries, no? Loco, don't shit talk Bezos on his own platform. I'm not shit talking him. I'm just holding him accountable for the battery situ- Ah, there you go. It works again. Never mind, guys. We can stop panicking. There's treats on the chair, dude. Does he speak Dutch? Or English? <laughs> He's sitting there the whole time! Bro, what? There's no way! Well, that was weird. I've been talking Dutch to my cats pretty much the entire time, guys. Maybe they are... Maybe they're English. Maybe they just speak English. Well, actually, they're Siberian cats. My Russian's not very good, though. What happened? I, I came into the room and I said, yo, there's two more treats on the chair. Toby must have been sitting underneath the chair for like a minute. 
And as I say it, he climbs on top of the top of the chair to eat the treats. Ay ay ay. Hello. I saw you. Um, I like how I lean closer to my monitor, as if I'm- I'm so f***ing stupid. Anyways, it really did seem like there was a boss over here, because it went down. Alright, I guess we'll go this way. What? <laughs> okay, the game did not want me to go that way. Fair enough. I had to give it a try. You were thinking about it too. I think we were all curious, okay? I let the voices in my head win this time. Jump, Loco. Do it. Like, no, I don't. I mean, it feels like a bad. Don't just do it. Everybody does it. Yeah, that was for signs. I was just checking if there's fall damage. Yeah, there's fall damage in real life too, by the way. Motlessis is here, guys. He says, I love once more. Aww. Love you too, Motlasis. I think he meant live, but that's okay. <laughs> There's a shiny, though! I want to get the shiny! <laughs> I thought it was like a slide? I just jumped in there like I was on a... I don't know. Like I was on a, in a rush. I really want to get that shiny. It's, 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 it wants me to loot it. Cat dust? Cat dust? Cat dust. In a bottle. Temporarily reduces presence. Okay. Oh, okay. A special dust that reduces your presence like a cat. Aww. My cats can definitely pretend like they don't exist. They're very sneaky. How are your cats doing, by the way, Mutlasis? I feel like I haven't heard about them in a while. Mutlasis got a couple of uh, kittens a few months ago. Or a few months ago? Maybe not even a few months. Hope they're doing well. There's a lot of copium again going on in the StarCraft universe now. I mean, the StarCraft people in general love the copium and the hopium and everything in between. Uh, I posted about it on Twitter. Yeah, they admitted to StarCraft's existence. That's a step forward, precisely. Corporate Vice President of Xbox said this about third StarCraft part. yesterday. The first party title or a third party's title. Is there any series or game that you want to see have a revival? You go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, not me so much, but Especially since I've been here this week, a lot of fans and I've had a lot Low of people ask me in interviews. Ryan! Thank you for the resub. Love you, dude. Week, a lot of fans and I've had a lot of people ask me in interviews about StarCraft. Oh. So, she acknowledges the existence of StarCraft, Chet! That's all. That was the whole video, basically. Oh, I know a lot of you want that, which is what's most important. <laughs> so, uh, it'll be fun to see if that's something that Starcraft 3 confirmed, dude. There it is. Yeah. She said the word Starcraft. That's it, man. That's gotta be it. She definitely, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gonna single-handedly run that. I'm sure. Hey, thank you very much, Ryan. Starcraft 2 reforged? No! Don't you dare say the words Starcraft reforged. Yo, Lady with Broom is insane, man. Okay, I'm gonna try my new ability. Hit me. Hit me, lady, one more time. How long does this thing take to charge? Oh, oh, okay, it's got a little progress bar. Okay, I didn't realize that I had a little progress bar. Smile. Hey, you shy guy. Thank you for the smile. That was my Brian impression. I think it was pretty good. Half-Life 3 StarCraft Edition confirmed. I do really like StarCraft. Do you guys... Like, do you guys know that? I've played StarCraft a couple of times in my day. And I actually, uh... I enjoyed it. Yeah, some people call me a nerd because of it. Like, playing video games as an adult. I mean, that's kind of crazy. 
Uh, I don't dare to tell my parents about it, because, you know, they might take me out of their wills, but I have played StarCraft in my day. You're only here to watch you play StarCraft? Oh, well, I don't play that game anymore, because uh, the vice president at Xbox told me it was something that needed reviving. What's this? Children! Cut their heads off! Ah! Children have a lot of hit points, dude. I oh god, there's a whole crew of them. A swarm. A gaggle. A murder. A parliament. Kill them, man. Get rid of them. Is this in the West Side Story? I don't think it's in the West Side Story. I'm not sure though. These guys have a lot of HP. They actually don't get staggered by my attacks either. God. Did I tell you guys what I learned about Mario and what he says? Let me get this right before I mess it up. Apparently, he does not say, It's -a me, Mario. Apparently, that's not what he says. What he actually says, it's, It's -a me, Mario. Which means Super Mario in Japanese. I don't know if this is true, but I, for as long as I've been around for, have always assumed he says, it's, it's -a me, Mario. But he says, it's -a me, Mario, which means Super Mario. He literally says the name of the game. I know I'm, maybe everybody knew this. It's actually brilliant though. That's so clever. It's -a me, Mario. That's so good. That's so clever. According to a TikTok user. Well, TikTok is where I get all my scientific facts. TikTok, TikTok is one of the most reliable sources on the internet. If I read anything on the internet, it better be on TikTok. This is like the, yeah, new according to a Facebook user. Exactly. Nowadays, nobody posts on Facebook anymore, so you can't really, you know, there's no such thing as according to a Facebook user. Is there anybody in the chat that speaks Japanese? Does it actually sound like he says Super Mario in the Japanese language? Memory is Japanese. Yeah. The voice of Mario did a three-minute video on this. Go. I've been the voice of Mario for 26 years. Now moving on to Luigi. Now moving on to Luigi. Oh. <laughs> That's so creepy, dude. Luigi two, Luigi number one. Ha <laughs> ha. Most replayed part. Hold up. And so I, I, I love that. Bring, bring, bring. <laughs> I love sharing things too. I go to meet uh, Mario fans and uh, I hear the most wonderful thing. You know, the, you're the voice of my childhood. Or I, you know, I used to play with my dad. Now I'm playing with my kids, you know, and we just, it's a way our family comes together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha! Ah, pretty good. Ah, this brings back the memories. Mamma mia. Why does he look exactly like I would have imagined the voice actor of Mario to look like? I don't know why. You just have fun, you know? That's my mantra for life. Come on, let's -a go. Let's have more fun. Bye bye. See you in my games. Woohoo! <laughs> That's so funny. Charles Martinet. He's from San Jose in the United States of America. Very nice. You hear that in the distance, Chet? You, you heard it? It was far away, but I could notice it. He retired. Yeah, apparently so. Soon he will have a uh, different accent. Soon he will have like a Jamaican accent or something. Loco, uh, hold on. I'm standing and saluting. Very nice. Hey, Loco, what are Dutch people really proud of? I don't know. What are Dutch people really proud of? What are we really proud of, guys? Once upon a time conquering the world. Yeah! Our war against the ocean. Yeah! What are we collectively really proud of, though? Because a lot of these things are definitely criticized. Yeah, the Netherlands did start up the, you know, current version of the stock market and that sort of stuff. The first proper edition of companies and whatnot, but there's also a lot of weird stuff going on there. Yeah, not being Belgium. I think the, the one thing all Dutch people are in agreement with that we are most proud of is letting the Belgians be independent. 
I think that's the greatest moment in Dutch history. Yeah. Yeah, when we finally... Yeah, when we just let him, yeah, hang out by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all of Europe. That's all of Europe. The color orange? I don't know. What is... Is there one thing that everybody... What is the Netherlands most proud of? Are the Dutch proud to be Dutch? That's a strange question in my head for some reason. I don't know. We should ask big. What are the Dutch people most proud of? Here we go. Bing, we can just bing it, chat. That's because you're not a patriot, Loco? Definitely not. This is gonna, yeah, let's see. What are the Dutch people most proud of? Let's, let's have a look. What does, what does Bing come up with? According to the web, the Dutch people are most proud of their country's progressiveness on social and moral issues, such as LGBTIQ rights, soft drugs, euthanasia, freedom of speech, yeah. They are also proud of their knowledge of water management, commercial spirit, sporting achievements, royal family, questionable on that one, and social security. Okay, yeah, you know what? Let's go, euthanasia, woo! Our allies Wait, mm, mm, hold up, that's, mm. Being proud of that though is, yeah, is an interesting one. I think the Netherlands is pretty cool. Yeah, Dutch people like to complain a lot. I guess that goes for every country around the world. Hey, buddy. I knew you'd do it. I had a feeling you'd be the perfect bait. I got what I wanted thanks to you. The last hero weapon is finally in my hands. I knew where it was, but I didn't dare lay my hands on it. The swamp is too dangerous. Someday soon, you'll see. You have my thanks. And you've earned a nickname. Alidoro's Best Beat. Nice! See you at the hotel. A lot of my friends call me Masturbator. But this might even be better. Thank you, man. Okay, so he's gonna be back at the hotel. Yeah. I need to go talk to this man over here. He was on a bit of an adventure, but I he's back at the hotel the now. last treasure thanks to you. The Saber. It'll always remind me of the rascal who stole it. Then fell into the nest. I, I tried to save him, but uh, I failed. Let the punishment fit the crime, I say. <laughs> hey, the cat I... is over here. What? Can I please pet the cat? He never wants to be pet. Oh, he let me pet him! Game of the year! Game of the year! This dude was hissing at me and everything, man. Now that I'm a real boy? Yeah. A great weapon calls for a great warrior. Like you don't even pet your own Show cats. me I that you're worthy all the time, dude. To the point where they are like, you know, telling me to fuck off, but I don't. Don't worry, they they mess with me all the time. The two dragon sword. This is a technique weapon. Probably very good. But I'm not running a technique based build. 